wealth and love and time to enjoy it all. It's actually really good. This is good. It's good. Yeah. It tastes so good that I could have like three of them. There you is go. That, is that, is That's that... the other side of you coming out. <laughs> That's the club side of Albert coming out, man. I bet you you could party. What's your craziest story? Oh, I had... you, where's the craziest place you ended up? Well, well, when you were high or drunk or both. Well, well still probably does is not gonna like the story, but, but I, I no jail? no no. Well, I've been to jail a few times for drinking, yeah, but. Hey guys, welcome back to Driven Channel, and I'm really excited today with a special guest. Uh, I got here my friend Ty Lopez. What's up, everybody? But, but let, let me just quick minute here. I start. I get into the mortgage industry. I start my company, and then I start a real estate company, and I I can't seem to get traffic. And I'm like, hey, word of mouth is not working, and I'm just not. And then I get turned down to speak at events. And I want to become a, a celebrity. I always wanted to become a celebrity, but I notice more than ever. Like, why is it that that I can't grow my business? I, I'm not getting enough attention. So then I come up and I'm just going online and kind of searching, uh, looking up all these people that are influencers, online coaches, and I'm making about $300,000 a year, but it's not enough because we have like a S-Class Mercedes that I have. My wife has a E-Class. We weren't married yet, but I come across an ad and it says 67 steps. Yeah. And then I see your last name, Lopez. And then I'm like, wait, he's like, he probably, he's probably Mexican or maybe Colombian, maybe a mix. I don't know. Then I find out you were, you're part Puerto Rican. Yeah. But then I buy your, your course. And then right away, I barely bought it. And it's upselling me to buy like a second part for like 130 something or something yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> so then that's how I started. But I, I started studying all the steps. Mm -hmm. And, and then I started getting ideas. And then that's when I found out, hey, you know what? the internet is really important. Yeah. You gotta go online and you gotta make sure that that you are a presence so that you could sell your product. So that's yeah. when it all started. I got online, yeah. I started following you. I found out you live, uh, you live here in Beverly Hills in, yep. in that big house. But the, the funny part is that this used to be your office. Right here. So this you used to be your office. office. So, awesome. so, so tight. The world knows you, yeah. but for people that are here uh, watching you and, and I'll also have a list of, new things that I want to get out that people haven't heard yet before about you, but who who is Ty Lopez and, and how do you feel being back here at your uh, previous oh, office? It was good, man. I feel this was one of my, I, I had other offices in LA, but this office was, you want me to wait for that one? Oh, no, you're good. I'm going to talk. Yeah. Um, so 67 steps launched and three months later, I got this office. Yeah. Because I was, I always like to run stuff out of my house so I don't have to commute at all. And so I had a, a house right up here and I was like, oh man, I really need an office. Things were blowing up. I had an office on the East Coast. I had other offices. So I told, my friend told me the two hour rule. I mean, two mile rule. Set up your whole life within two miles of your house. It's just easy. It's like have your friends. I moved all my friends from around the United States. They all live within two miles of me, my brothers. So I said, I'm gonna get an office. So this is down, you know, on Sunset Boulevard. Found this place and um, moved in. That was that was April. I launched 67 Steps in January, moved in here in April. But then even this place, I outgrew it. So I got a Beverly Hills house, which was two miles away. Yeah. I clocked it, it's almost exactly two miles. So I had this and that, but that house could hold. That was a 17,000 square foot house. So I could hold 60 people in there, you know what I mean? So. So yeah, it's good to be back. You did it up nice. It's nice. I like this setup. Comes with tequila. Yeah, we're gonna have some tequila right now. Uh, <laughs> Comes but, with everything. But so when you started sixty seven steps, do you remember what year that was? That was uh, I launched it. By the way, I think it's a speaker. Uh, oh, you think it's mine? Yeah. We're we're rec the the audio's being recorded, right? It's still being recorded, but I'm, I don't wanna. I think it's fine. Do you need the speakers? Yeah. Just make sure the audio is good and we'll just pause it and continue from that part. I like it. All the people getting to watch live, it's always good. You get to see behind the scenes. What happens? You get yeah. to see the real thing. 
It's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that speaker just for us to speak? Yeah, it's just, just like a monitor. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's inputting. You know what I do is a good trick. The ultimate backup trick: stick an iPhone right there on voice mm -hmm. memo. Like I run my own sound every once in a while. The only sound that'll be good because iPhone voice, like the iPhone voice memo, is insane quality. Yeah. Rick, I got sound engineer traveling with it. Why? What did they do to make the iPhone such a good recording thing? I don't know. It's, just a quality it's like better than all. It's as good as a love. Yeah. If you literally sometimes close enough, it's all when I do a podcast, I'll go like as a backup. I'll go to voice memo like this a little practical podcast now. I'll go here, right there, voice memo. I'll put that sucker right here. Is that, yeah, is that for backup? That That's a good backup too. We, I always set that up. Because worst case in a podcast, as long as you have audio, you can run that thing on Apple, Spotify. So for any of you watch, is this live? I should try to pull it up. Watch the live. It won't create a feedback loop too bad. I can watch myself. Oh, here it is. I know Insta really like delay stuff. Here we go. Let me see if I can see myself. I see myself on a delay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they put the little. What are those things? That that's what. What is that little mic that sits down there? What do they call that? Sennheiser. Isn't that a Sennheiser? Oh, Sennheiser. That one. But I think that's what that one is. That one get, gets crisp audio. That's zoom, oh, that's a Zoom, yeah. yeah. You, you you gonna set it right here? This, this will get it from there. Yeah? yeah. You sure? Rick, that get all go that far? Well, if the gain's loud enough. Yeah. Turn it, you know, so it just, have, I mean, it's very directional too, so. It's going this way. Yeah. And then I still oh. process it through, uh, through an app. And then this is still this is working though, right? Yeah. So we're, we so and then that's the backup, and then the the chart the cameras have the battery. Cameras have the backups, direct power, this backup audio, direct audio. Okay, cool. So we're good. Good. Yeah, we got two backups for everything. All right, so we're good, right? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Are we are we restarting? This? No, we're, 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 we'll continue from there. Okay. Three, two, one. Hey, Ty. So when you got the this office, you got it. You said you got it right after you launched 67 Steps. Yeah, like three months later. So right? that was what year you said? That was, tw so I, I pre-launched 67 Steps in July, 2014. But it went, my here in my garage video was January like 24th, 2015. Mm. So it's been, it's been eight years. And then three months after that, I just had to keep expanding because it's just like <sighs> business. I needed to keep hiring people to handle all the, the inflow, customer support, sales. I originally got this for a sales floor, mm -hmm. you know, build out a floor. And so, yeah, then I moved it to my house eventually. I was only here for about a year, so. But. So when you when you had this, uh, so you had this space for one year? Yep. So where, it's because you outgrew it. Yeah, and it's just like for me, I was like, dude, I can fit everybody. I had an acre in Beverly yeah. Hills. It's such nice weather in California. Everybody come work outside in the yeah. I had a big pool. So basketball court, that was my favorite. I do business meetings out on the basketball court while I'm shooting around. Yeah. I used to love those videos. I don't like to sit. I don't if I got a choice, I don't want to sit. I don't like sit down. Can you still days. ball? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. I always surprise everybody, man. I played at one of the top high schools in the US called Enlo in North Carolina. So John Walls from that league and PJ, a lot of NBA yeah. guys come out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. So, so Ty, when did you really make a lot of money? Like, when was your break? Like, was it before? It was way before 2014, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 67 when, steps. When do you feel? Because I remember you were in your couch, you were broke. You talk about yeah. that story. When, yeah. when, what, what year and how old were you when you, when you made like a big Sorry. move that made you a lot of money where you were like, man, you know what? Yeah. And then I, I know you also went and got your Ferrari like a a long time ago. Oh, yeah, you talk way about. before. Yeah, everybody was like, this guy, Ty, got a got a Lambo, like just to put an, in a commercial. And I was like, not even close. I, I had my first 10 years before here in my garage video, yeah. I had my first Italian car, like mm -hmm. Maserati, then I had a Ferrari. Um, so I was net like, I, you know, and with me, I'm more of a slow and steady. So I, it's hard for me to pick a day 
when I felt I made it. You know, I don't even think that way now, but I, I made, I, I just say, keep adding a zero. I remember making my first, you know, thousand dollars a month with internet stuff. That was, that's a long time ago, man. And then 10,000. And then I remember hitting a hundred thousand and a million. So for me, I'm not one of those stories where I go January 1st, 2012, yeah. all of a sudden. So by the, I had been living in LA since 2007 and in 2007, I had a bad, I had a house a mile from here. I was on a TV show called Millionaire Matchmaker. So I was already making enough that I was effectively. That, that's when I was losing everything. Is that when you were losing it? Yeah, oh yeah, you were mortgage, in a mortgage 2008 in the wrong time, man. Yeah, I never, I always tell people, you gotta get in businesses that go opposite of the economy. Yeah. So when things go bad, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, mortgage, yeah. Mortgage is good on the upside, but you gotta have a downside business too. You need two businesses. To survive these years. Yeah. Because right now it's like the same as 2008. US government doesn't know what it's doing, jacking up interest rates. And so it's gonna be, nobody's gonna refi a house. Yeah. Unless they have to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. N now, back in, in 2007 and eight, even yeah. though I was kind of losing everything, I was going to this club here called Le Do. Do you remember that club? Oh yeah. Le Deux. yeah, so. Le Deux. I, I was remember going that. there, yeah. <laughs> and and I remember the there was this bodyguard. So Paris uh, Hilton was going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this bodyguard, Tadao. He was a bodyguard of uh, this, this celebrity. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but Tadao was the bodyguard. But I used to go there and I used to party there like- uh, Was he a Samoan guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the big, big guy. Uh, and he's uh, he was a bodyguard of this actor. I can't think about his name right now, but he's like, uh, he, I think he's Puerto Rican too. And he's like, um, he Mark came Anthony? out- Anthony? No, not, not, not his name. I'll, I'll remember later, but, but I used to go there and party and yeah. it, it used to be like the best parties. And th yeah. this is when I was like, I got into bad habits. I was doing cocaine. Yep. I was uh, drinking a lot, but they had the hottest girls in that club for some reason. Yeah, Ledoux was and, good. And then they opened up the back, the back they used part. To have, that's it's like a house. Wasn't it like kind of like a it, house? Kind of like, yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah. it, it was a, yeah, like a house. Yep. And, and they had like a little ki kitchen place yeah. or, where people had like, it kind of looked like a restaurant in a way too. Yes. But when they ended, they opened the after hours in the back room. I don't know if you ever went to the back room. No, I was. I, I never liked to party as much as you, man. Yeah. I'm a kind of party guy. like, I'll party too. I don't like to be awake when the sun's coming up. Ah, I don't like that. Yeah. People party till, I, I like to party till two and stop. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Well, th that's when I got into bad habits. Yeah. Um, nothing I, good I, happens after two in the morning. Yeah. I'll tell you that. It's like, some people say nothing good happens after dark. There's good, hap nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Yeah. Be and be asleep by two, even on your party. Like I'm, I don't think you should never party. I think you got to enjoy life every year of your life. But I never went. You never push it past eighty percent craziness. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. And now you're back. Yeah, you're back because because yeah. for a while you were like I, I don't know I what hibernated. happened. I just needed a break, man. I I took like three years off. You know, I got, I was like posting like once a month during the hybrid. So COVID came and I was like, okay, here's a chance to just chill. So I took three years off. I've been going, I started my personal brand really in 2009. So it had been about a decade and I was going, you know what? Let me just see, I'll, I'll take a break. And now, even now I'm not, I'm officially back on. I told my whole company, January one, I'll start pushing it hard. So right now, going on podcast runs, been on yours, been on different people's. And, uh, but I still got another month. I'm planning my return. You know? Are you going to go back to uh, like the million dollar a month or millions of a month in ads that you were spending? Or, or is there Probably. something different than the ads now? Well, I, I, look, here's what I tell people. If you had something that was working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So there was a lot of stuff that was working well. I'm going to turn that back on like a light switch. But you have to adapt because the world's changed. So yeah. if I try to do what I was doing in 2016, 2017, it's not going to work. So you have to keep. It's like Warren Buffett says, you know, what made him money in 1976 didn't make him money in 1977. What made him money in 77 didn't work in 78. You have to be a learning machine. So I, I, I think I'm a, I try to be a learning machine. And I think the world's changed. Now you got shorts. So content used to be longer, you know, you, and although I will tell you, 
I still think to build a personal brand, you should not do only shorts mm -hmm. unless you get so many views and very few people are going to get that. So to me, you got your top of the funnel, which is new people discovering who you are every day. Use shorts for that. And then halfway down the funnel, the middle of the funnel, these are people who know you, but they haven't quite bought from you. You sell them something here. And then the bottom of the funnel, those are people who not only have bought something, but they bought multiple things. Yeah. Those people want to hear my longest content. Mm -hmm. They want to hear two hours a week, three hour a week podcast. The middle of the funnel will watch a 10 minute YouTube. The top of the funnel will only watch a 30 second. So you got to be creating 30 second, 10 minute content and two hour content. You know? Yeah. And and regarding the the social media platforms, yeah. which one are you going to focus on the most? So here, yeah, that's a good question. I Look, you got to do TikTok now just because it's so powerful. I, I read, you know, it depends your age group too. If you're going after 16 year olds, 18 year olds, 22 year olds, they're all on TikTok and Snap. Yeah. You know, Snap's still bigger than people think. If your target audience is 30 plus, they're all on Instagram. Yeah. If your target audience is 50 plus, they're on Facebook still. And the thing I, YouTube is, I like YouTube and Instagram because everybody's there. 18 year olds are on YouTube and, you know, and, and Insta a little bit, maybe not IT, but YouTube's the one that every age range, like Warren Buff is 90. He says he used to watch YouTube's. The poor Joe Biden probably watches YouTube. So YouTube is one I think people don't double down on enough. And I built like I really went viral when I went all in on YouTube. So all, all YouTube's coming back strong for me, TikTok and stuff. But I but I also think people underrate email list. Like yeah, I was email. gonna ask you about that. I get I get emails from you three times a day. That's right. Not every day, but you get them enough. And now one thing I'm doing different is, you know, a lot of my brands were just sold through tylopez.com, like 67 Steps, SMMA. Now those have all branched into their own separate companies. So mm -hmm. they'll have their own email list. Yeah. So theoretically, somebody who likes my stuff could be getting 10 emails a day from different companies. Yeah. That's how you really keep on. Because you, you have to, it's easy to be forgotten now. Everybody wants to be, I read there's 6 million influencers with over a million followers six million isn't that crazy i don't know if that's true but i know it's millions yeah, yeah yeah if you look across all countries so you're competing it's it's a competition out there it is a competition i was watching this video even fish it was two male fish i don't i forget the species but they dig holes and the mm -hmm. female fish only want to mate with the male fish that has a clean like little hole in the sand. So the other males come and they spit sand to mess up the other dude's hole so it'll look messy. So all day you can watch a video, just Google it. These fish, these males sit there spitting sand in each other to compete. That's the competition. And I wish the world wasn't that way. Yeah. But that's the law of the jungle, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When so the email list, are you saying like for example, um, if I want to email blast people, should mm -hmm. I email them like from Driven, from Ambiance, from yeah? Mortgage guys, I would develop just yes. me. Just make the content different. So, yeah. for example, for you on the mortgage side, you should have a list of. Well, that one's a tricky one because the question is, are you focused on consumers? B2C, or you can so focus on B2B, people who want to become mortgage brokers. What's mm -hmm. what's more important for you? For mortgage right now, it, it's it's uh, people that want to become mortgage uh, brokers, yeah. more, people that want to become like yeah. loan officers. So I would create an email list just for that. If you had a 50,000 list of people who who are currently mortgage brokers or thought of it, that 50,000 list that's hitting them daily with cutting edge things about the mortgage industry, you might get a 35, 45% open rate. You're hitting 15,000 people a day opening. And that's not, remember the rest of the people see you. They see your name. That's what people forget about email marketing. People go, well, Ty, if you hit a million people a day with your emails and you get a 20% open rate, 
80% of people don't see you. I'm like, that's not true. Because they see the from name in their Gmail. It says Ty Lopez. How many times? Think about it, How often do you see an email and you don't click on it? So I'm getting a million people remembering who I am every day. See, so you emailed me today at 241, 236. What are we selling? Let me see. 240, 241. Look, Albert, I got to see this. Albert, final call for my last event in the US this year. Oh, that's because you live in LA and it, I'm doing an LA and event. Then, and then you did another one at 236. So, so like five minutes before are that. Are you sure your email ain't twice in my database? Oh, well, the other one has a different name. So it's probably another email that I have. Yes. Because I yeah, have a you bunch probably signed up sneaking on my list. You're under there under Alberto. Yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> yes, yesterday you emailed me three times. Yeah. See, I think you're on my email. I'm extending morning. Cyber Monday details yes. inside. Uh, hello, hello. Went from broke student to generating. So is it two different email addresses? Yeah. Yeah, because I have a few diff different uh, email yeah. accounts, but but yeah, like I I get a uh, yeah I well, get I, I get them different. I've never missed sending an email every day since 2013. Or even, or I think never, I started you, my, you I've never, never missed one day of sending an email in the last 10 years. I've sent 3,650 days. And, and that's a secret weapon, man. People think, and also SMS lists, you should be sending a text blast once a week. Just once a week? Yeah, why, because why, why text, text is more expensive. Okay. But text just because people unsubscribe from your email list. Um, so you need another form. I, I never put all your eggs in a social media platform basket. Mark Zuckerberg can wake up one day, deplatform you. YouTube can you can wake up one day, you're kicked off YouTube. You can wake up one day, you're off TikTok. But email list, unless you do something horrible, that's your list. Right. You know, no your, one takes it your away. Email from list you. is a million? More, more. I mean, across all my platforms. Now, you don't always want to email the whole list. We focus on the most actively engaged yeah but then yeah oh man i don't know how many millions have joined my email list over time then you do a reactivation campaign once a month try to hit the people who aren't active so i'm i try to grow my active list by hundreds of thousands of times how do you know? how do you get the active list through your crm yeah yeah i built my own software man i've been doing the i, I built my own software starting in 06 so i don't use any of the platforms that most people use I got a custom ba ba base. No, no offense. I mean, there's lots of good ones out there. ClickFunnels, Kajabi, you know, go high level. They're all good. But I, those didn't exist when I started. Yeah. So I had to build my own email software. Would you ever consider going to like high level, go high level or, or are yeah. you staying, sticking with your I, I tell people don't do what I did. Don't build from scratch. Like if you can yeah, go high level is good. There's lots of, I've used Salesforce. I've used almost every, I've used ClickFunnels when I launched MentorBox. We use ClickFunnels for a while, but there's a lot. Go high level is good. I've got a, I've got my own software for people building personal brands that I help people. So the software is the easy part yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. That it used to be the hard part. Mm -hmm. But there's a downside. The easier things get, the more competitors you have. Right. When I started, if you started ten years ago, people had there was no live streaming either. The first time I went live was in 2013. Yeah. And 150 people joined. And I made a hundred thousand. Yeah, 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 it was a thousand dollar product. A hundred, that's the conversion rate was crazy, yeah, seventy five percent. Yeah. But I had to use all this complicated technology to go live. There was no Instagram Live, TikTok Live, YouTube. So there's good about the modern world, but there's bad. The good about the modern world is it's easier. The bad is that means it's easier for people to compete with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you taught me the the life thing, and I took it for for serious, and I started doing it, and now we yes. have all our. All our agents here going live every, yes. every night. So so it's like because Oh, you this, do that. You do that. Yeah. yeah. So everybody goes live. That's like, good. So I have everybody going live and we're cre we're like disrupting the real estate um That's awesome. industry with everybody going live. Cause yeah, not a lot of people go live. They're scared. No. But I keep telling them, go live, go live, yes. go live. So I go I go live like a maniac in the yes. mornings one hour and the nights one hour. Yes. And on seven different platforms. Yes. And I and I, I you saw got that. You, you got that. Yes. Yeah, I have yeah. I have a huge tripod. I built this tripod. Actually, Adrian, who worked for me, built this tripod in 2014. Now you, there's some streaming software with one laptop. You can go live on like five platforms. When I started, you had to have, I, I still travel with like 14 phones. So I went to Brazil. Brazilians are like, whoa, what? they're like, think I'm there to sell phones. I had to convince the customs officer. I'm like, I'm not going to sell phones in Brazil. He's like, why do you have this? Then I had to show him my Instagram. Be like, see, I have a lot of followers. I got to go live. Well, and I got a phone for Facebook. I have a little label on the back of each of my phones. It'll be like, 
Facebook, Snap, Insta, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. You can go live. Now you can go live on Telegram. People are going to go nuts soon. More platforms. Is, is that something up. you recommend me to do? Just put labels on them and use That's one what I do. Yeah. I do one. I, it was getting annoying because I had this tripod and people would take the phone out. I was like, I'm going to super glue yeah. them into the tripod yeah. so nobody could take them out. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd come there. I'd be like, I got six phones out of my seven. Yeah. Where's my seventh one? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we took it out to charge it. I'm like, no, oh, fuck that. Charge it right here in the yeah. damn thing. Now, yeah. now you say stick in, don't stick to just one, right. be on all of them just yes. in case uh, Zuckerberg decides to like shut down Ty yes. Lopez for some reason. Exactly. So the, the thing is that Instagram makes me the most money though. Yes. Because like I go live, like, so if, if one of them I want to protect, Yes. forever it would be instagram because instagram, yeah. if they take away my instagram then yes. i I got to figure out how to make more money on the other ones yes and i noticed that the tiktok like tiktok gives me a little bit less results mm -hmm. than instagram not not a little bit but a lot more like a lot a lot um less results than instagram yeah. because most people i feel are younger yes and they don't have as much money as the yes. instagrammers so yes. how would you how would you battle that? How can I get more customers from TikTok and and also Facebook? Because Facebook also has older crowds. Yes, I think TikTok. The thing about TikTok is you got to make it up with volume. If you say crazy enough stuff, you'll get twice as many people on TikTok. Like if I do a boring live call, yeah, I'll get like a hundred people at it one time on TikTok. If I start talking a lot of shit, it'll go to like two thousand people continuously. So TikTok is not one, you can't be relaxed and just sit in a chair here. TikTok won't get you any results. You gotta do TikTok like if you're on a roller coaster or something, like go to Magic Mountain or something and be doing something crazy or yeah. be at a club. TikTok will do better like at a club or you're like in your Ferrari. You mm. need to shoot that in the Ferrari. Like race the Ferrari on a drag strip and then, yeah. So, so TikTok needs craziness. Yeah. To engage. Instagram and Facebook, since your audience is older, they'll actually sit down and listen to an intellectual business conversation. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube can do better than you think, though, man. But I'll tell you one thing. Make sure you develop a list from your email list of people who like you live. And every time you go live, 30 minutes before, send an email to a Zoom link. So when I'm live, I have all the social platforms but I also have my own Zoom. And that actually makes can make just as much money as Instagram. Hmm. Because Zoom, there's no distractions. If you're live on Instagram, sometimes people get another pop-up, they go check their DMs. But yeah. if they're on Zoom, they're a dedicated customer. Yeah. So like 200 people on Zoom is makes you just as much money as 200 people on Instagram. But it makes you twice as much money as, I think the worst one is probably Twitter. Twitter got a lot of haters, boy. Like Twitter, you get 2,000 people and you make $2. Yeah. yeah. Twitter's return on investment is not there. Yeah. Maybe it'll change now that Elon changed it to X and all this stuff. How do you feel about the X, the change? You, you feel like companies should change uh, logos and, and names, company names? I wouldn't have, but you know, Elon Musk is probably smarter than me. So remember, he owned X in 2000. So he's had like this this thing about the letter X, he just loves it. I, to me, people are still gonna call it Twitter for years, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess, I wouldn't bet against Elon Musk. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, people are like, oh, he made the wrong move. I'm like, ah, I wouldn't bet against, it's like, it's kind of like Mark Zuckerberg. He launched, he changed the name from Facebook to Meta, which mm -hmm. I still think is stupid, but I, Mark Zuckerberg made a lot of good moves, man. I wouldn't bet again. These guys are titans. It's kind of like- He's like doing his karate thing now and relaxed. Jiu yeah, jujitsu. Yeah. You know what's funny? So about two months ago, remember Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg were gonna go do a uh, MMA fight yeah. in the Roman yeah. Coliseum? Yeah. So I was on a podcast, I forget which one it was, and people go, Ty, cause I've been doing jujitsu for a long time, like 10 years, you know? And they're like, Ty, what do you think about this? And I said, I promise you, it'll be the stupidest fight you've ever seen, number one. Number two, they'll be injured before that fight starts. There's zero chance dudes who sat in a chair their whole life are going to be able to really fight, you know? So 
uh, about two weeks ago, I checked my DM. Some random stranger wrote, sent me a picture and said, you called it. Sure enough, is Mark Zuckerberg in a hospital. He tore his ACL. The fight hasn't even started. He's injured. You know, it's kind of like, like you're Mexican. Mexican Mexicans are good boxers. Yeah. You ever watch two dudes that don't know how to box box? That shit's boring. It's hard to box. So two MMA guys that have never done it is going to be two dudes who get tired in 15 seconds. And but I called it. Yeah. Injured before the fight, boy. <laughs> I, no I think if they did fight, I think Mark would have won. Oh, yeah. You agree? Yeah, Elon, Elon I, I saw shape. Elon got on Elon got on um Joe Rogan or something, and he's like, I'm so much heavier, you know, because I think I think Zuckerberg's probably 160, 170. Yeah. And let's say he, I've met Elon multiple times. He's kind of heavy set. He's not if he's in shape, he's about two fit ten. Now he's out of shape, so maybe he's 240, 250. So let's call that an 80 pound difference. <laughs> yeah. So I train with the Gracies in jujitsu. One of the things the Gracies told me is you need one year of jujitsu per 10 pounds heavier the guy is than you. So if let's say, let's say Elon's 60 pounds bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Six years? Six years. And I think Zuckerberg has probably been doing it for three, but Zuckerberg has one advantage. He's been trained by, he, he's the fucking richest guy almost in the world. So his trainers are the best. So I would say it's a low likelihood. He would, he would choke Elon out like shit. I'll do a fight. Elon, you want to fight me? The winner gets each other's net worth. I mean, I will destroy Elon. People, I've been training for a long, and, and I'm not, a, I'm only a blue belt in jujitsu. I mean, I should be a purple belt, but I don't have time to do it. But a, a blue belt will decimate an untrained guy. Yeah. Now, Elon's strong. If Elon trained for a year, he'd probably beat Zuckerberg. But no training? He said he doesn't need to train. I'm like, you don't understand. Jiu-Jitsu guy is going to... All you have to know is how to take someone's back. You, you, you never want to bet against Elon, though. <sighs> on fighting, yes. <laughs> Not on money. But on fighting. People think they're good at everything. I'm like, yeah. you know... Just like, who would you take? Mike Tyson at 55 versus an up and coming young boxer at 25 who's not even pro yet. Who are you going to take? A good Mexican Tyson. amateur I'll pick Tyson. fighter. <sighs> yeah, maybe. That's tough because boxing, people get winded when they get old. Oh, that's right. But, but it's close. Yeah. It's close. You take a dude out of Mexico that's been fighting for, let's say, since he was 10. <coughs> He's 18. Are, He's are, not pro. are you talking about like a new boxer the same size as Tyson? Yeah, yeah. Similar. Similar I, weight I class. Would pick, I would pick the, the new yeah. guy then. I would pick the new. I thought you were talking about like a new yeah. up and coming like star and maybe. No, like Tyson a one. Bigger. But, the same size. but what I would say is I wouldn't bet any money on that because yeah. there's a chance Mike Tyson hits him hard once. Yeah. Those, those guys like that got. He's got a solid 20 punches that can take yeah. your head off. Yeah. You know, boxing's hard. I've done a lot of sports. Boxing is the sport. This is what I tell people about boxing. <clears throat> I saw you see that video of Drake boxing the other day. I'm making it like he looks zesty. Somebody said, but boxing is the sport you can do for five years and still look horrible. It's like ballet. Mm -hmm. Boxing is an underrated sport, man. You see like like Canelo. I saw, who was it, saying they could beat Canelo? One of the social media guys. I'm like, oh. Jake Paul? I don't know who it was, but I'm like, here's I'm going to take all my money. I'm going to sell everything I have. I'm going to bet on Canelo. There's zero. Canelo is like, I, I took, I know Floyd Mayweather. I took him to a Laker game not too long ago. There's so much skill in boxing at the at the Floyd Mayweather level. This dude's never been knocked down. 50 fights, no knockdown. <coughs> nah. Anyway. So speaking about like sports. Yeah. Uh, I saw you in uh, Puerto Rico uh, working out a lot. Yeah. And, and, and you were like shredded. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that something that you continued? Are you still shredded yeah. six pack? Or No, and now I'm like at probably like 13, 14% body fat. But I'll shred down. Like I've been traveling. It's hard to shred when you travel. Yeah. But I was probably then, I wasn't totally shredded, but it was probably like 9%.
um it's good you know it's good it depends when you shred down you're weak though when i'm fat i'm strong i can bench because yeah, like, your face look like small and like yeah like, like you had you had more you had like wrinkles and right now you look yeah. your face looks like you have you no wrinkles. more full it almost seems like you got botox or something i got a little chubbier i got a little chubbier he's trying to say um what do you how do you feel better like right that, now or like before like 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 puerto rico days yeah like when well i wouldn't say better uh you feel better lighter you know i like what um i like what what's his name says uh Conor McGregor. Yeah. He says at 140, he has unlimited endurance. At 160, he's strong. And at 150, he's a little bit of the best of both, you know? For me, that's how I think. When I was when I'm like 157, I can like cardio, play soccer, football. That's when you were doing it, like your soccer. Yeah. But I can but if I bulk up to like 190, I can bench like 330. So what do you want to be? A little fat? And it's funny, different kind of women like you, depending. That's that's what that's why I was asking. Yeah, like yeah. now I'm like in between. I'm like 170, so I look a little chubbier in the face, but not super chubby. Um, I don't know. You get you get. It's funny when you're like nine percent body fat. If you date a woman, the women who like like skateboard guys, yeah, will be like, I like your body. And when you're like 190 and strong, the women who like hyper masculine dudes. We'll be like, oh, I like how your look is. But it just goes to show you, you can't please every, you can't never please a woman. Then completely. you got to get different clothes too. Yeah, you, shit, yeah, I know. What, what about what about the roided guy? So you, have you ever been on roids? I've done T, I've tried everything. So I did this experiment for the last six years. I called it a million dollar body. I've spent more than a million bucks trying everything. So I've done everything legal you can do with a doctor. I didn't, I didn't go crazy where you're going out on your own. So I never did crazy steroids, but I've done some T I have high testosterone. Like I haven't done anything in three years and I, my testosterone is still about a thousand. My, to my, my a total. thousand. Yeah. Like, like in my blood. Naturally. Nothing. Yeah. I've always been like 900 to 1200 on nothing. Do, do, do you mind sharing your age? Cause you look, you look like, <laughs> like 39 or, or everybody asks. I like to keep it a mystery. Yeah. Dude, it's I the most, it. most Googled thing about me. Uh, and it's a little practical thing for all of you. When you're building a personal brand, Check what people search on you on Google and keep it a mystery. And the reason is if they're already searching on it, it just increases your search volume. So for you, let's say people are searching net worth, Albert Preciado. It's probably your most search um, thing is Albert Preciado net worth. Yeah. It says 15 million. Yeah, but never answer it. So there's never a definitive answer. See, it says on YouTube, uh, I mean, on Google, it says you're 46. Yeah, but that's not my age. I don't know. Somebody went with that age and I just like never. There's other ones that say younger, some say older. So, and it says your net worth 15 million. You need to get it. So some websites say your net worth is a hundred. Some say your net worth a million. One thing you got to learn from the sports people like Conor McGregor, always have controversy, man. You need controversy yeah. around you. See, like You have one, a lot of controversy around you. We got to up the controversy. So that's good then. Even even for my mortgage business Hell in real yeah. estate, get more controversy. E even what's the most controversial thing about you? The I, <laughs> I I had the I had these um, I mean I I had these idiots that it's like reviews and shit that, like that. that. No, that that you know they used to work for me. Yeah, and they got with an attorney. Oh, and then the attorney worked for free. Yeah, and then they created this bogus lawsuit about me. That's and, fine. That's and, America. And and and, the, and then they put and and then they did a deposition, but the attorney looks stupid. Yeah. And and the and he's just attacking me. Yeah. And making all these false things about me and trying to get me mad. He ends up getting mad. They shut the deposition down after like forty five minutes. He can't get anything out of me. And the uh, and the person in charge, the moderator, is like, "Hey, this is going nowhere. You're just uh, you're not you're going off subject. You're just you're just insulting the the yeah. guy. And 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 we're gonna end it right now." And then the guy's like, he 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 gets all mad and he starts calling me a quitter, and I'm not even doing anything. I'm That's just they, they just stopped it because you're being a dumbass. Yeah. And and they they start they start calling me. He starts calling me. You're qu you're quitting. You're quitting on the deposition. They make no sense. Yeah. They just wanted free money. So yeah. so then what happens is it ends, and everything the case goes away, and then he puts it on on YouTube. 
Yeah. And then he starts putting them on YouTube. <laughs> and and so sometimes people look me up and, and they're like, I looked you up and I saw that deposition. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, do you know the real story behind that? Yeah. So it was just the bogus dumb stuff. They were just trying to get money from me. You need to create your own YouTube reaction video. And then you control the story with the same Albert Preciado disposition. Yeah. So you think it's a good idea for me to like go go back at the deposition? Well, I would do this way. If it's if it's died down, it's, it's not died a down. Big, yeah, if it's died down, don't bring it up. But in the future, when the controversy comes like that, then get 10 of your allies to record a video on their channel, like affiliates or people who work for you, yeah. called my opinion of the Albert Preciado deposition. Or like, and then so you start doing Google SEO, YouTube. So it's that weird video. If you know it's a lie, you can't get rid of it sometimes, but you dilute it and you have your side of the story. Yeah, yeah. Donald Trump's good at that, man. People have attack videos. He always has, he always says his side of the story. I, I just approached it by, if I ignore it, yes, it'll die down faster. But yes. if I attack it, I'll give yes. it more, more, more power. Well, it, it, you have to be, you have to use your judgment. So sometimes I've been attacked, and it's small. Sometimes I've been attacked. I've been medium. Sometimes it's been big, and I've reacted to the bigger ones, um, but not a hundred percent of the time. Because sometimes you got to remember, on social media, just because a video, let's say somebody, somebody makes a hate video on you, let's just say, mm -hmm. and it gets. 2 million views. You might think, well, that's going to destroy your brand, but that might be 2 million people who were never going to buy from you anyway, right. because they just, there's hater channels out there now that just attract people that don't ever buy shit. So I have big hater channels out, right? It never affects my income because those 2 million people, they're not the kind of people that they're pessimists. You're getting yeah. optimists buying your stuff, man. Opti if you're a total pessimist, why would you buy one of my trainings on how to build a business? You already don't believe in it. So yeah. the main time you have to react is if it crosses over into your true loyal customers watching mm -hmm. it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So these mm -hmm. people, for example, these people that are, that are making videos of you on YouTube and yeah. they're talking about you and and yeah. making up stories. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, but they like, I'll, I'll see like different stories that come up about Ty yeah. Lopez. Yes. Now that you're back and you're yeah. back online, he returned, but then they start making all these things up and then some of them get a lot of views. Yes. What, what is your approach to handle those? Well, like I said, a lot of those ones, that get a lot of views. I've learned at first years ago, those freaked me out or bug me. And then I realized that's a group of people who follow those negative channels and those people, will never become a customer, so why do I care? Mm -hmm. Number two, it's way better to have contra controversy about you than nobody to know who you are. Mm -hmm. So what people don't realize is the average person, let's say somebody makes a hate video on you or me. Yeah. Let's say it's 30 minutes long. How many people sit down and watch a 30 minute YouTube video? No, most people don't. So what most people just see my name, Ty Lopez. So it's reminding them, oh, Ty Lopez is still alive. Your main goal in a personal brand is make people to realize you're still around. Yeah. People forget you like that. Yeah. Why do you think people forget you like quick nowadays? Too many yeah. new. Yeah. Too, well, number one, people have shorter attention spans now than ever. The average human has a shorter attention span than a goldfish, they say. Goldfish are like seven second attention span. Humans are five. So if you're not constantly in front of them, I, like basketball, I was talking to somebody who was like 18 and I brought up the name Michael Jordan in basketball and they're like, who's that? Mm -hmm. I'm going, this dude already forgot Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Think about sock football, soccer, Pele. This guy was the most popular human on earth. Now people don't know who Pele. Then you had Maradona. Maradona was like the biggest name. I guarantee you 30% of people, even in soccer loving countries, have no idea who Maradona is if they're under 21. So right. even the Hall of Fame people get forgotten. You know, there's this new movie out called Napoleon. I just saw it. It's a bad version of, I mean, it's half decent, but people don't realize the human that has the most books written about him in history is Napoleon Bonaparte. But if you walk down the street in Hollywood and say, oh, Napoleon, most people think you're talking about Napoleon Dynamite, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so the most written about human in history 
is already forgotten and he died in around 1821. So basically, I always tell people, I, I think people won't remember Elon Musk in 20 years. Now, does that mean we will remember him? Yeah. But a kid who's one years old right now. Like my when daughter won't remember. No, your daughter will be like, Elon who? Now, people, I, I've said that people are people like, you're absolutely wrong. People are, I'm like, it might be 10 years. Time goes fast, man. Paris Hilton. You're talking about Ledoux, the nightclub. Yeah, yeah. When I first moved to Hollywood, Paris Hilton's the most famous person in the world. Okay. I was going out a lot. Let's call it 2009. Okay. I went, there used to be Hyde. You yeah. remember Hyde was next to the com, uh, Laugh Factory? Yeah, yeah. So on Sunset, now it's a UPS store. There used to be the most exclusive club basically in the world was yeah. called Hyde. Yeah. Not the new version, the old version. It was the smallest nightclub in LA. It held like, let's say 40 to 60 people. Mm -hmm. I remember going there one time, I mean, in line. Paris Hilton, she's more famous at that time than anybody in the world. She rolls up, the doorman goes, pretends like he doesn't know her. He goes, what's your name? And she goes, Paris. He goes, Paris what? Paris Hilton. He looks at his list, he goes, you're not on here, sorry. They turned Paris Hilton away. And I was trying to get in that time at the line. I was like, I was with my friends. I was like, fuck it, we gotta leave. They just, they just turned down Paris Hilton. I used to try to get in there with Ferraris, beautiful women. But right now, not one person who's under 18, really remembers Paris Hilton, okay? Now listen, guess who her closet organizing assistant was? Uh, Kim A Kardashian. Named Kim Kardashian. Yeah. So Elon's maid in 10 years might be more well-known than Elon Musk. Elon Musk's personal assistant might be the most famous person in the next 10 years. Now there's a chance, I wouldn't bet against Elon totally, but in 50 years, there's no chance people what, will know. What Elon do you think Musk. that happens? Why do you think Paris Hilton like kind of faded? Drugs. Yeah. Probably. I saw her a few years ago. I went to a party. Rihanna had a party for a fashion brand with Jay Z uh, in on Melrose, probably like 2018, and Paris Hilton was there. And I was like, oh, she's done some drugs. She's done some dr drugs. Will, drugs will take you out of the game real quick, man. Yeah, cause Paris Hilton. If you Google like her net worth, it says three hundred million. I don't know how how true that is. No, she's wealthy and she's smart. But Kim Kardashian, if you look up her net worth, oh, she's a billionaire. She's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was the assistant. Not only that, she wasn't even the regular assistant. She organized her closet. That's a whole nother low level of shit. It's like, yeah, what are you personal assistant? No, that's above me. I just do closets. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> bitch, fix my closet. <laughs> That's what that's that's what Kim was. <laughs> now but, she's a billionaire. Yeah, she's a and that whole family's a billionaire. So, so, so sometimes being being an assistant to the right person right. could could mean a America lot loves a come up story, man. You hear that, Maria? That's yeah. why I tell people. I tell people. I meet people out on the street. They're like, "Oh, you're always nice to everyone you meet." I'm like, "Yeah, because you might be disrespecting the dude or the woman who ends up becoming bigger than you." Yeah. So you got to stay humble or else you look like, you know, you look like a fool. A lot of people have told people you'll never make it. Yeah. Then they make it. There's a story of Shaquille O'Neal. I interviewed him for a podcast. I bought bodybuilding.com and my first podcast was with Big Shaq. And he was telling me um, there's a, which basketball player, a young dude now tells the story of like where Shaq was nice to him. He wasn't. No, he was. Well, he was nice. Yeah. Him. And I forget which player disrespected him. I, I forget the story. But the point is, I want to be on the right side of history. If I met Kim Kardashian back in 2010 and Paris, I didn't. But if they hypothetically walked in the room, I'm going to be nice to both of them. Because imagine if you're like, I don't want to be in the room with this closet assistant. And then the closet assistant becomes the most famous person in the world. And people take revenge. There's a lot of people, you know, 10% of people that want to be rich and famous. I'm going to tell you why. Maybe 20%. Somebody disrespected them in their childhood. And they're going one day. Yeah. I'm going to show up at that person's house. And I'm gonna be like, remember me? Yeah. Like humans are petty like that. Yeah, yeah. Humans are petty like those two fish spitting sand in each other. Do you have any people on the list like for yourself? No, man. No? I, I, for whatever reason, I didn't get that gene for uh, long remembrance of... 
I actually think if you want to be rich, you probably want that gene. Yeah. That's why I probably I'm not the richest person in the world. I don't have that gene. I, I think Elon Musk, you read his new book or the biography about him. He was bullied by these guys. You know, that made it that took a big toll on him. In fact, most of the richest dudes in the world were beat up in high school. You know, Bill Gates was beat. I mean, he's like a little nerdy dude. You know, Zuckerberg was. Elon says he was. And so I wasn't really bullied in high school, you know, so. But there's a downside. People who are bullied often experience depression for the rest of their life. So I, I wouldn't wish it on somebody to have that. But do you have it? Do you remember back where someone disrespected you and like one day I'm going to show them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have that because like when I grew up, I didn't speak any English. So right. like, like I, I didn't learn or I didn't start learning till six. Okay. Yeah. I, I took the school bus, went to the valley, right. the hills, and then everybody was like white. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, what, what, where am I? It, yeah, it, yeah. It's like the Bart Simpsons. Uh, like that's the only place I saw like people that were yellow. <laughs> and, and and I'm and I'm like looking. I'm like the little brown kid, and they yeah. start calling me wet back. Go back oh, to yeah. Mexico. So I was I was treated like that when I went right. to school, and ESL class, special ed class. Probably a lot of those people are on your email list now. You yeah, need to write yeah, an email, yeah. be like, "Bitch, if that's one of you on that bus, you used to make fun yeah. of me. You're on my email yeah. list." <laughs> but I, but I grew up. I think I grew up. That that chip on my shoulder kind of yeah. pushed me to like do more yeah, and show them, does. like, "All right, I'm gonna have Ferraris. So I'm gonna be yes. on Sunset and all that stuff." A lot of people are like that. I I didn't have that, so maybe it would have made me more ambitious. I kind of more like a mad scientist. For me, yeah, most of my motivations are kind of yeah. my so own we, craziness. We spoke about drugs. Do, yeah. do you ever did you ever try any drugs? You know, I was on the basketball team on this on this big school and they were like, if you do any drugs, we kick you right off. So I never got into that. My dad was a drug dealer. Yeah. And he was super into drugs, obviously. And so but my mom took me away when I was young. So I never, I got lucky. I, I, you know, I don't have an addictive personality like that, man. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom super doesn't get addicted. I got, some of life is just luck. I didn't, yeah. my, one of my brothers is a heroin addict and he's the nicest guy ever. And he just has the, he got that side of the family like my dad and he just, he can't get unhooked. It's crazy. It's a sad yeah. story, you know? But you never tried like uh, like mushrooms? Yeah, micro- I tried it. But yeah. I never get that reaction people get. Like people are like, bro, I went on mushrooms and my whole life changed. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. See, I don't believe all humans are the same. I think people have different genetic makeups. Yeah. And some people are positively affected by marijuana. Me, I've smoked. I don't feel better. It doesn't, nothing. And if anything... I can't remember anything. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't respond. Snoop Dogg smokes weed all this time and became rich, famous, happy, and successful. I've tried to smoke like that. There's nothing but negative for me. Yeah. There's no positive. What What about uh, drinking? Drinking is the one you got to be careful of, man. Like, dude, n- and nothing brings out the worst in humans. And I read something like 60% of people in prison were drunk. When they killed somebody, smack somebody. So to me, alcohol is like, it's like a pit bull. As long as it's your friend, it's great. But if it turns against you, it'll rip your throat out. So alcohol, don't play with that. So for me, like tequila, like I said, what I do, uh, I live in Europe a lot. Everybody drinks there. And so I just get one glass, put one big ice cube in it. And just sip on the most expensive tequila. And then you get no hangover, man. Hey, Maria, get us two glasses with an ice cube, those big ice cubes. Yeah. And this qualifies for tequila, right? This is good right here. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have one. One. Maybe two. Maybe two. But see, this is the test that I do. Nothing makes you weaker in the gym than drinking. So for me, I've tested with vodka. Let's say normally I bench 200, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. You drink vodka. If I drink vodka hardcore go to the gym the next day 160 feels heavy it's crazy like I, and so when i say to that i'm like whatever the fuck's making me that weak i'm not doing that anymore but tequila i drink one or two nothing and also i track my sleep with this ring this aura ring you drink if i drink vodka sleep goes super shallow all night 
So you might be in bed eight hours, but it's almost like you only slept two hours. Hmm. To one one glass of tequila, really good. And, but but cheap tequila. If you're broke, stay away from alcohol because cheap tequila, <laughs> cheap tequila is like garbage, man. It's nothing yeah, but yeah. Work. cheap tequila. Yeah. Now when I drink, like in LA, a good shot of tequila is fifty bucks. Yeah, sixty. Mm -hmm. So only the good stuff, man. But but it. I heard you say somewhere that it's one of the healthiest drinks. Yeah, is, is tequila is healthy. I said this. People got all. I said it's got probiotic effects. People are like it's impossible to have probiotic effects in alcohol. Look it up. The fermentation process of high quality tequila is good for your stomach. It literally helps you digest. So you're out with. I was at Catch LA, good restaurant in LA last night. Eat your food. You, everyone else is drinking. Get high quality tequila. Drink it slow. Don't do shots. Shots, man, that's where people black out. They pop like 10 shots, you know? I live in- And you don't want to take shots of that. Nah. That's the waste. Yeah, and tell people, hey, if you're smart enough to have the money that you can do 10 shots of $50 te tequila, 500 bucks right there, shot, then you're going to black out. <laughs> so you don't <laughs> remember you even had the shots. You know, so and then that eliminates the whole. You're overdoing that, so it eliminates yeah. the purpose of feeling. Then the next day you'll be in the gym. That's why I tell men: test it, test your limits. Yeah, I can't tell you my limit could be. Di Some dudes might be able to do four shots of tequila, but you have to track with a ring your sleep, and then hit the gym the next day. Track your weight. I got an app, bodybuilding app. Since I bought bodybuilding, I use the app. I track. I know what my max PR is. Yeah. Alcohol make you weak. So Makes if you, you if you drink quality tequila and you have like just one glass or two glasses a day, would that yeah. be healthy? Oh, I wouldn't do it a day. Nah. So how often? To me, Friday. Just Friday. Once a week. But yeah, yeah. I'm not a look. Most entrepreneurs are extremists. Yeah. And the same thing that makes them successful also destroys them. Yeah. So. Oh, in everything, almost everything, almost everything, be the be the middle way. That's what Buddha said. Buddha said the middle way is the way yeah. of enlightenment. Well, how do you think you became that way where you're like very like you you measure everything and you're yeah. very like oh, I can't I can't push it too hard. I gotta know uh, where is the where is it gonna be too far right. or because because is that part of your is, is it religion that helps you with that? What you believe in? I mean, I'm not super religious, but um, you know what I think it is. I've been on my own making money since I was. Oh, got the tequila. Boom. What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Can we just measure the shot with that? Okay. What's the here? Come around on this side so people can see you, see the poor. We got we got a, a handsome uh, bartender. We got to see the bull, the poor here, man. You tell me what about? It's just a full shot, right? That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Time. Boom. Is that ice cube the perfect size or is yeah, it a little good. bit too big? No, that's good. So so that thing will dilute as it melts down while you're it looks like you're drinking more than you are. So all your alcoholic friends won't be like, yo, man, drink more. Thank you. Yeah, salud. Yeah, salud. My grandma used to my uh my grandma used to say, here, let's do my grandma's. She used to say, Salud, salud. amor y pesetas y tiempo para gozarlo. Amor y pesetas tiempo para gozarlo. Yes. That was her. She liked that one. That means health, wealth, and love, and time to enjoy it all. It's actually really good. This is good. It's good. Yeah. It tastes so good that I could have like three of them. There you is go. That, is that, is That's that the other side of you coming out. <laughs> That's the club side of Albert coming out, man. I bet you you could party. What's your craziest story? Oh, Did had, you, where's the craziest place you ended up? Well, well, when you were high or drunk or both. Well, well, still probably does is not gonna like the story, but prison. But I, I no, jail? no, no. Well, I've been okay. to jail a few times for drinking, yeah, but, but um, I I was at this uh, club. It's called the, uh, the, the man. What? It's In that. LA? It's that huge, like that huge, auditorium club on um, supper club. You Holly supper? went. No, I went to supper club, but it's the that big. Uh, it's like a. Avalon, yeah, yeah, okay, Avalon. Avalon. Yeah, so yeah. I went to the Avalon with Sale and a few other friends. Yeah. 
and and this is back in the day, so don't don't judge me, please. But but um, you know, I I, I sneaked in some 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 cocaine in my in, inside shoe. my sock. <laughs> So this is so, a Mexican so, side, Narcos, Mexico. So man. so I go I go into the club, you know, <laughs> you know and and we're doing that, and it's late. Yep. So it's like after two, they shut it down. Yeah. So we we stay in there because they let they let it. I think till like three or something. But I want to I want to get out. Yeah. And I kind of wanted because they stopped selling alcohol. I wanted to get out and have another drink or whatever. So me and Sil decide to get out, and then we got to figure out how to get back in. But I, you know, I you tip the guys, and sometimes they let you back in. Did you tip them with the stuff in your sock? No, no, no. I was I hiding it. Him, I didn't want to get caught with that because <laughs> yeah. you know I was I was I, I had it on my sock. But the but the point is, I was so like like fucked up that I we went to the car. I had an S five fifty tinted windows. So me and so just decide to go down to the car. We get in the car, and then we just start having sex. And and the, and the car is like the car is like bouncing, and we're <laughs> Wait, in the, this is is this your wife? Yeah, my wife okay. now. Yeah. So yeah. so so we're in the parking lot, and yeah. the car's just you know moving, yeah. but it's me and her in yes. there, and and then a crowd starts forming oh, in the my. parking lot. So we got people like are uh, like all around us, and then all of a sudden like like still's so like like what's going on here? And and I'm like oh fuck shit, and and we just finish and everything, get out of the car like nothing. And everybody starts like going to, like, oh, okay, okay. And we walk out, <laughs> we go back into the club and we sneak in like more drinks. And and it was just it, it was crazy, but but like we like to party. And and uh, and so that was a that was a crazy story. I have a few more, but but that's the only one that's as hard. That's much you can push it on. <laughs> but it was crazy that we didn't even get caught or nothing. We just literally yeah. went down for a quickie, went back in, got more drinks, and and it was crazy. But you know, that ended. I now I'm a complete different person. Yeah, you, you got your Don't family. judge me on those things. No, I don't judge people. Hey, people, like I said, I live in Sweden. Those people drink like, they, they're very disciplined though. Yeah. No alcohol Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe. Friday, Saturday, maniacs. Yeah. Everyone's blacked out I in might that have whole a, country. I might, it might be my Italian side that I have from there my dad's side. Italians are go. like that yeah, too. Yeah, they're right? like that. Yeah. Mexico too. Well, Mexicans have it in their blood. Mexicans Especially drink. My dad, drink. like I said, my dad's. His, his dad's from Spain and his my grandma's from Puerto Rico. So I'm like half Spanish, yeah. half psh, my dad drank. Now, boy. Now tell you you talked about we well, we touched religion. Yes. So are are you uh what what's your religion? And because I tried have you tried a lot of different ones? Because I tried a lot of different, tried different ones. Yeah. Like what's what what's your favorite one or or what are favorite you? Favorite one. I mean, my I grew up around my mom was Christian. I grew up Christian, you know, somewhat. My mom changed a lot. So I live with the Amish for two and a half years. They're Christian, but like super conservative. Uh, then I live now in Scandinavia where they're atheist. Most everybody's atheist. Uh, you know, I think you got to take the best. Have you ever tried everything. Scientology? I haven't, but this is LA, man. Everybody's doing Scientology. Grant Cardone. I, I don't even know what he is, but I know, uh, I know Hollywood's full of Scientology, man. Yeah. Have yeah. you done Scientology? I, I took some courses. Actually, yeah. Grant Grant introduced me to. He Scientology. got you into it, yeah, yeah. And and I went there and I and I did a few courses. And you like you, it? You know, I I like the the stuff you learn. Yeah, they yeah. teach good stuff. I I don't go there it's anymore. Like a self help positive. Yeah, thinking. I think I think there's good and bad to everything. Yeah, uh, but some of them are more. So I feel like some religions are more like they're they go a, a bit too far sometimes. Or too far. Did you grow up Catholic? I grew up Catholic, and then I did, yeah. Then I did a little bit of um, Christian, yeah. And then, uh, and I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Some of them call themselves religions, but they're yeah. not. I don't feel like they're religions, yeah. But I, but but I tried Scientology, and 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 I learned, I learned a, you know, a lot from different ones. But well, yeah. I believe I, I, I'm not so much an atheist. I think like, uh, I think that if you think about it. There's obviously something much more powerful than us. And people just use different words. So yeah. a scientist calls that nature, but the letters N-A-T-U-R-E, those might they might have the same subconscious thought that a person who says God. Yeah. And so there's all there's and also I think there's a good chance humans might be a dream of somebody else, you know. We might be the dream. I you have if you have a strange dream when you're in a dream they seem so real, and then you wake up and you go, that was just in my imagination. There's a possibility one day we all wake up, 
and we're like, oh, all this was a dream. Yeah. Because when you're in a dream, I mean, look, people I mean, jump from a dream. People sweat from dreams. They're bought, they're literally not fooled by the dream. So there, I think there's a high probability, and even some of the smartest scientists think that a lot of our life, it's either our own our own dream or some future version of ourselves. There's so we also could be like yeah. the Sim City kind of like yeah, like we could be Sims. We also could be living in parallel universes. That's my thing that I think I believe. So I think the reason that prayer works. Okay, there's a lot of people who have prayed for something and something miracle happened because I think there's parallel universes happening at the same time, but sli each one slightly very. So, for example. There is a variation of the universe where you're wearing a black shirt. I'm wearing a white shirt. There's mm -hmm. a variation where life's going well for us and life's going bad for us. Yeah. There's a, there's a variation of life where life's going amazing for us. Mm -hmm. And so the reason manifesting or prayer or positive thinking, or if you're an atheist, they use thing they use that they call it positive psychology. The reason that happens, I think in a skip of an eye, you switch into another universe yeah. and you don't realize it happened. That's that we call that a miracle. Mm -hmm. So if you're religious, you call that a miracle. If you're a, you know, scientist, you call that a time warp. Yeah. And you just warp into another universe. And I think the weird thing about life, if you're listening and life sucks and everything's bad, there is a possibility that in a blink of an eye, your life gets better. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that were experienced a life. I, I saw a story of a guy who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, hmm. committed to commit suicide. He was super depressed. He jumped off and ha as he was falling, he said to himself, I made a mistake. I'm supposed to be alive to help the world. And he hit the water in a way that he didn't totally die. And the Coast Guard thinks that uh, dolphins came and lifted him up. It's a cool story if you read about it. They have some of the Coast Guard. They're like sometimes dolphins in the ocean see people sinking. He got lifted up and, and he felt like my life changed. He had health problems after that, but he's dedicated his life to a new vision. It's almost like the guy was born again, like they say in religion. Yeah. And to me, he just skipped into another universe. When he was on the top of the bridge and he was jumping, he was in the worst version of his own universe, yeah. the depressed one. And when he was in the water coming up, it was like he was born into a new universe. Yeah. You know, and some people do it the opposite. The founder of Victoria's Secret was on top of the world. He he started the biggest lingerie brand. Most men, that's a man's dream. Yeah. Start yeah. Victoria's Secret. Yeah. And he sold it, but he didn't sell for enough money. And he killed himself. He jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, left behind wife, little kids. So there's an example of a guy switching universes into the wrong universe everything's yeah. going great and he switched into the worst universe yeah. which was death yeah so you want to be the dude who jumped off depressed and came out of the water happy yeah not the one who sh was happy and then hit the water yeah. depressed yeah now now tell you you're extremely smart it, and i heard you talk about like the first wave second wave third wave yeah and you said you talked about that with a few people and you were telling uh brad was complaining about like man why <laughs> he, it almost sounded like he was saying why am i such like a loser doing so bad <laughs> uh i i was the first one to have like a like a tech company and and, and training courses and, and what am i what have i done wrong and you tell him well you're on the wrong wave and, right and, and maybe maybe there's still a chance you catch the third wave yes so let's just say mortgage yes and we have Rocket Mortgage and we have UWM, the big, mm -hmm. th those big mortgage lenders, but they've been open for about 40 years. One, yes. one, one, one a little bit more than 40 years, one a little bit less than 40 years, but around 40 years more or less. Yes. So I started my mortgage company because I want to make it, and, and I have a real estate company and I have the Driven, uh, which is a education seminar company, but mortgage, just, just to use that as an example, I opened it 10, 10 years ago, almost going on 11, but it hasn't caught the that big spurt that I yeah. want yet. Like, and and I'm wondering, like, how can I get to become a rocket mortgage faster? So, it, are we? Am I just on the first wave, or is would this be the second wave of mortgage, or or how would you recommend me to like catch that 
third wave because the right. third wave you said is the best one. The third wave, you want, yeah. It's usually the third that makes all the money. The first social media network was Friendster. The second one was MySpace. By the way, MySpace had an office right almost in this building, I think. But the third was Facebook and yeah. he made all the money. You know Ted Denick? I know Ted. Yeah, one of my friends. Yeah, he, well. he 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 said hello to you. He yeah, he's, he's uh, got office. Does he still have that office down the street? No, 9, no. 000? He I think they I think they sold that business or okay, something. Okay, yeah, sold yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ted's yeah, a good guy. Yeah, but he was part of the he was the part MySpace of the group, the yeah. MySpace mafia. Yeah, yeah. The PayPal mafia. That's Elon Musk, and then you had the 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 MySpace. But oh, I'll tell you one thing. I've been thinking a lot about this recently. So for you or anybody listening, you know, how do you jump and catch the third wave? where you break out, where you wake up and all of a sudden your life is like, you were making 10 grand a month, now you're making 100. I always say when a zero gets added to your income. Mm -hmm. So if you're at 10 grand, a breakthrough is going to 100 grand a month. Yeah. If you're at 100 grand a month, hitting a million a month. Yeah. A million going to 10 million. So the breakthrough, I'll tell you what, I was listening to this recording of an audio book. Somebody was reading Andrew Carnegie's book. Mm -hmm. So if you look at American history, probably the three best business people of all time in America was Rockefeller. Number two, though, was Carnegie. He started yeah. a steel company in the 1800s. He said he never worked more than two hours a day, mm -hmm. but he became worth 400 billion. He said his secret was collective intelligence. He means, he said, I build a group of people that every obstacle in my life I spoke to the group, okay? And we would all debate. It was like 10 or 20 smart people. And he said, we didn't always agree. But out of that group came the ideas that took me from, you know, he went from being worth 1 billion to 10 billion, 10 billion to 100 billion, 100 billion to 400 billion. He said it was that group. So I think people are too isolated now. So for you, you need to become, and you're pretty good at networking. You even have to go out further and build a bigger group around you. But now you're more successful. So you, you need a different set of people. So you got to get around people who are making 100 mil a year or 100 or 1B. And when you do that in that group, it's like the mafia in that group. They're not going to tell the world the answers, but they'll tell you because they're a friend. They'll be like, you know what? I used to have a mortgage company like you. What broke me out of it? I'm retired now, so I'll tell you. Boom. And you start collecting these strategies. Yeah. And I think people don't do that. And I think the world, because of social media, we think we're social, but really we're isolated. Yeah, right. Isolated people don't get rich. It's funny. Elon Musk had 13 guys that he lived with with PayPal. The, the Two of them went on to start YouTube. One of them, two of them, Peter Thiel and Ken Howery, went on to start the largest venture capital world company in the world, Founders Fund. One of them went on to start LinkedIn and become a billionaire, Reid Hoffman. So we think that Elon Musk is this genius and he sits at home and he has ideas and he goes, ooh, I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden, he makes $100 billion and Oh, But uh, the truth is, he made his wealth with PayPal. He didn't even start PayPal. Peter Thiel did. But he surrounded himself and lived with some of these people. Yeah. So I tell people, man, if you're young and you don't have a family, you should go live in a business entrepreneur house. Yeah. 20 entrepreneurs living there on your level or a little bit ahead of you. Every time you're eating lunch, you're talking about some new idea. My best ideas weren't always my own. Getting on YouTube ads, I was at a dinner in Hollywood. But you execute it. Are you, but you have to execute. But you're already, you're not a procrastinator. So you, you're different. If you were a procrastinator, I'd give you a different set of advice. But for people like you that are already do stuff every day, you now need more strategy. If yeah. you were a person that's been getting good strategy but never executes, different piece of advice. Yeah. So I have a few billionaire friends. Yes. And uh, I mean, not a lot, but yeah. you know, like two or three that that are the friends were were on speed dial and we have yeah. lunch and things like that. And and I have I have a few local ones too. 
uh would it would you recommend me like have hang out more with them as much as i can yeah and then have them introduce me to their phone book yes that also hit them once a month with a question i got got smart people on my phone i'll be like i'll take this i'll leave a voice memo short like 30 seconds like number one problem i'm having in business now that i need to break through boom 20 seconds i take that message <laughs> i forward the same message and yeah. i store them in my phone all under one word so with whatsapp you can forward to five people, forward it to five. Before I go to bed, maybe 15 people I send that same question to. I wake up, it's like having my own PayPal mafia. I wake up, I listen to the voice memos. Always out of those 15, not everybody replies, let's say half reply. Out of those seven replies, like three of them are like so obvious ideas yeah. that you get rich overnight. People are always trying to go, can you get rich overnight? Well. Wealthy, no. Rich, yes. A lot of people have gone in three months and become millionaires. Billionaire, not really. It's rare. So you ain't going to become wealthy overnight. But there's lots of people in history have gotten rich overnight besides the lottery. Yeah. And it's always the same story. Always. So so you think for somebody like me, you ha I have to find somebody now next level, like somebody yes. that's at least a hundred million or a billion. Not not yeah. somebody uh, not, not but not not somebody my at my level or a little bit. I have to find somebody like way, way above. Higher. This is my rule. I did a TEDx talk in 2014. It really launched my personal brand called the law 33%. You have to spend 33% of your day, every day, with people on your level. Those are your friends. Yeah. 33% of your time should be spent with people way below you because you help them. You need to also give back to society. Mm -hmm. But 33% of your day has to be with somebody who's 20 years ahead of where you want to be. So take wherever you want to be in 20 years. So whatever you want your net worth to be, whatever you want your income to be, whatever you want your body, you know, like all those things, wherever you, what you want your house to be like. And not just try to manifest it. Yeah. Go be with somebody who has that. So yeah. for you, that's 33 hours. Let's say, how many hours a day do you work on? on 18, 18. Okay. So let's say you're working, let's just say you're working 80 hours a week. Yeah. You're, maybe you work more, but 80. 33% of that, that's 25, 30 hours. Yeah. That that means you need to be spending three, four hours a day with people like that. Yeah. It's a it's tough. Yeah. People are like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. But if you do it, it gives you everything you want. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. The, the reason why I say 18, 18 hours is because I, I sleep six hours. Right. And even the two hours that I'm at the gym, I'm on my laptop because I have I'm my gym right business. here in my, in my right. office. So I'm in I'm on my laptop. I'm, I'm like half laptop, half working out. Like yeah. when I have a break, I'm on my laptop DMing, sending messages, reading something, yep. re listening to something. When I'm with my daughters, which I'm not, I'm going to say here that I'm not the best example of a father. I have three daughters, mm -hmm. but I give him some really good in, like unconditional time but for like yeah. 20 minutes yeah. but sometimes i'm with them and i'm on my phone or something and it's not the best example as a right. father but you know i'm not perfect i'm not saying that i'm perfect but i'm always working and sometimes yeah. like i wake up and it's because i have so much um ambition right that that, that I, I i i just can't break and and even when i'm dreaming or when i'm sleeping I'll have sometimes nightmares about my business or dreams about my business. <laughs> so like, that's why yeah. I say 18 hours. But I mean, if you want to be technical, maybe I work 15, 16 hours right. a day, but you get my point. I just, I'm just always, yeah. my mind is always going like this. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, my one thing on that, I'll caution you. Some of your best ideas come on when you relax. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, if you read Jeff Bezos to build Amazon, he said he didn't like to get out of bed for one hour. You, you see all these hustle advice where it's like, wake up at four in the morning. Okay. Then you see Jeff Bezos, <laughs> who's almost the richest guy in history. Yeah. And he's like, no, I like to get out of bed slow. You know, he's like, I like to be in bed and just daydream. So I, I if I got a choice between listening to some random Instagram blue checkmark guy and Jeff Bezos. Yeah. I'm going to go with Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So that's why I've said I've incorporated into my life a lot of creative time mm -hmm. and that'll give you more time with the kids too yeah because just playing with your kids you think you're wasting time you, you learn you learn stuff because sometimes like my older daughter yeah. or even my little one my, my mid one my my middle one 
my older one is going to be seven and my my middle one is four. Yeah. But my seven-year-old, she'll ask me questions. Yes. And then I learn things. I'm That's like, right. I'm like, why are you asking me that? And I start processing it. And it's like something that teaches me something. Out of the mouth of babes. That's what Jesus Christ yeah. said. Out of the mouth of babes, wise things come. So. So, you, so what do you do with your relaxing time? What's your schedule like Monday through Friday and Saturday through Sunday? Like how many hours do you sleep a day? I like to sleep eight hours. I've tried six hours. It don't work. For when me. I sleep seven yeah. hours, I do feel better. I'm just like yeah. do I'm, seven, man. Yeah, do seven and a half. I think I think most humans at the minimum need seven and a half. I'll tell you this: you ain't gonna be any poor from seven and a half. Yeah, there, there, there's there's people. Einstein said he needed to sleep twelve hours. He was pretty successful. He like <laughs> reinvented the world as we know it. So I think I try to sleep eight. I shoot for eight and a half. That way, on the worst case, I get seven and a half. One of my billionaire friends, he sleeps like nine hours and he's probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it's true. I think there's a few people that are born with genes. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger said he never needed to sleep that much. Donald Trump says he doesn't. I believe him, but most people ain't Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. You know, that's like being like, oh, LeBron James can. I'm like, well, you ain't LeBron James. Yeah. That guy's got a special gift. So I think most people should be. I, I don't. If you're wealth and success hinges on one hour of sleep you don't have good strategy right because strategy beats work all the time yeah it's like leverage it's, it's kind of like you know chris rock the comedian used to say i don't go to the gym people are like why he's like i got a gun <laughs> he's like i'll need muscles i'll shoot you in the face strategy is having a gun <laughs> you know, trying to beat somebody up that you're working hard, but you're always going to lose to some skinny dude who who knows how to pull a trigger. Yeah. So you need in business, you need a gun is much more powerful than big muscles. Yeah. In a yeah. hand to hand fight, you want muscles, but making money is in hand to hand. Yeah. You know. So how much relaxation time do you, do you take to think? I think you need hours a day, man. I, I think... Put it this way. What does that look like? Like So for me, I think a, here's a good schedule that I, th I think is powerful schedule. Wake up. First thing you do, give money to charity. I like to do that. So I keep an app on my phone. There's a good charity called Kiva, K-I-V-A. I don't work for them or anything. I don't, it's not a promotion. Kiva, they lend money, no interest around the world to people who need money. So instead of just giving donations, they have to pay it back, but no interest. So I'll do like a Kiva loan. I'll loan somebody some money in Africa or Asia, or they do it in America too, to help some. So I think you should start your day. Remember where you came from. Get back with your money. Could take five minutes. That's it. Then, you know, brush your teeth, whatever. I like to go back to bed, but I don't go to sleep. I'll prop myself up on a pillow. And I'll check my phones. I'll think. I might read a book. I kind of just get my brain warming up, thinking of ideas. Yeah, yeah. Then no more than an hour from when. So let's say you wake up at eight. By nine, get out of bed. Go for a walk, especially if you're in Southern California, but do some start business. So uh, if you're an executive, you should have between three and 14 people reporting to you. So I'll call those people. Don't micromanage every part of the business, but you need to micromanage your managers. You call them, not text them. I'll text, but I like to call. 50-50 or? No, I probably text more, but calls are more valuable. Got it. So let's say you have, for me, I have about 12 managers. I divide my company into 14 divisions. I'm the 14th division, so I have 12 or 13, and I'll call them like every three days. Like why, when I was walking in here, I was talking to my director of paid marketing, Adam. I was just on the phone with him. Talk. So when I go on a walk, I'm, I'm doing something. So within an hour, start making money. Go hard for three hours. I got, there's a famous book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. The average human has about three hours of hyper intelligence. Whatever your IQ a is, day, a, day. a day. Whatever your IQ is, it'll, you can keep it strong for about three hours. 
So I got that first hour when I'm in bed thinking. Then I got two more hours. I try to get a ton in. Like this morning, I had a call. I had like, oops, that's fine. I had like, I had like four calls. I had a call. I'm trying to buy a company in London. I'm trying to sell a company. I has had a call. Boom, boom, boom. I had a client. I do a private coaching. I coach like super. I'm one of the most expensive um, one-on-one business coaches. So I have people who pay me like a hundred grand for like a once a month call. But these are smart people. I learn a lot. So I had one call with one of those guys for about 45 minutes. Um, and that was three, that those first three hours. I work after that, but make that the insane three hours. Yeah. Make I'm your an, toughest decisions. I'm in the old tie right now, like 200 grand after this. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Bitcoin. Dude, I do. You know, it's funny. I launched in 2013. I launched a program. Yeah. Before I was here and I didn't call it my private client. I, I said, uh, I used to, every Sunday I opened up my house networking. Yeah. And, um, it ended up being all these entrepreneurs, beautiful women would come. It was a cool event every house Sunday. Right no, it was oh. before that. It was up on the Hill on Kings road up there. And, um, anyway, I said, let me talk to you all. It was more like a barbecue. Yeah. It wasn't that business, but I said, there was like 40 guys in the room that were all entrepreneurs. I said, all right, sit in a chair. I'm going to tell you something. I will mentor any of you one hour a day, once a month. I mean, one hour a month on the phone Yeah, for a year. Pay me $25,000. I thought that was a high amount of money. Boy, I remember being like, Whoa. Well, back then, that, that was probably like more than 100 grand now. Yeah. Well, almost every dude raised their hand. And I was like, wow. So I couldn't take everybody. The first guy I took was this guy, James Swanick, who now is, if you see, you ever seen, I wear those blue blocker glasses. Yes. Yeah. He has a big company called Swanee's. I own 1% of it. Um, he owns this big, kind of like a competitor to Alcoholics Anonymous. He's crushing it now. I mean, he's making, I won't say how much, but he's like, and I'm, I still coach him. I got a plan for him to build this into you know, exit. I want him to exit for a hundred million bucks. So that was the first guy, and I started that in 2013. It's crazy. Like, I've been doing it for 10 years straight now. Yeah. Never had a refund request. I've told everybody at the end of this year, if you don't think this is worth the money, I'll give you your money back. Never. It's the only product I've ever done that I never had a request. So now I charge 100 grand. Next year, I'm raising it to 250 grand because I have too many people. Yesterday, I had a dinner at the SLS, the lunch with almost top three biggest name you know online. I won't say which one. I have a confidentiality, but um, he's in his 20s. He made 20 million net this year after tax. He's crushing. That's a good net number. But those blonde, people- Blonde hair? No, not a blonde, not American. Um, so anyway, that's, I, I like to do that kind of, Why'd you say blonde hair? Who are you thinking of? Trying well, to maybe not blonde hair, but like like- Light brown hair. Nah, I'm trying to think who <laughs> he you likes. Mean? The box. No, no, I don't think you know this guy. He's bigger outside the U.S. Mm, got it, got it. He's pretty big. I mean, he's he's he. I'd say he's a top five influencer. Yeah, yeah. The But anyway, that. So I do that. I I do that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, but but how how do you get so smart? Like like well, 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 you re you read a lot of books. I know that. Like I and, and I know there you, you have a. I heard you say about there's three ways of learning. Yes. Right? Uh, wh what are those three ways of learning? So this, I actually got this from the Dalai Lama, you know, spiritual. He said there's three ways that people learn, three levels of learning. The first is people hear you, but it goes in one ear, out the other. That's 90% of the world. Just think about it. I think about stuff. I'm like, people are still out here complaining you can't make any money in the world. Where there's, li I know 500 people that can actually teach you how to make money online. You're one of them. I know how to do it, but there's 500 of us and half of it's free on YouTube and people are still out here acting like it's 1964 when, you know, back then it was hard to make money. There was no YouTube. There was no nothing. Okay. So that's most people. Level one learners here shoots out the other ear or even worse, they think it's a scam. Level two is listeners. Mm -hmm. That's where people kind of listen to you you saw that. I was at your drip, your big driven conference. It's mm -hmm. been getting bigger every year. So I was there this year. 
You see people out in the audience, most of them are listening because they paid money to be there. Mm -hmm. So they're taking notes. The problem is they're not level three learners. Level three is where it becomes instinct for you. It's kind of like boxing, I was saying. Level one is like a little gym fitness class where everybody's there boxing and they all look horrible. Level two, they're really trying. They're like, okay, the form is keep the hand up and extend out and twist, you know? But the level three guys, they're not thinking about it. It's yeah. instinct to punch. Yeah. They know. And so you have how do you become a level three person? It has to become a habit. And you have to have that level of commitment to it. And most people don't. So sometimes people say, Ty, you tell people to read, and but I know a lot of friends that read books and stay broke. I'm like, that's right. Because it goes in one ear, out the other. They're level one. Because you, you can't read how to box or you can no. listen how to read audiobook, how to That's box, right. right? Is that the kin kinesthetic? Kinesthetic. Level three is the kinesthetic learner where you start to do it. I, I was. It was funny. I, I have a telegram group with a group of people who were like complaining about all the online people teaching. Mm -hmm. And there was a dude saying, well, I bought this guy's course. I forget what course it was. And I'm not making any money and da 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 da. And I asked the guy. I just left a voice on Telegram. I think he was shocked because he didn't know I was in the group. And I said, have you actually tried it yet? Did you do it? So he's like, well, the guy doesn't have all the lessons complete in the course I bought. I'm like, well, how many does he have? Well, he has 10 out of the 20 lessons. Did you do all 10? No, no, I haven't started because I figured if there's not all 20 in there, that it, what do you mean? Bullshit. Yeah. So the truth is some people start and most people don't. How do you become a good boxer? You look bad for a couple of years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, you know, they were in my program. Logan Paul's in my SMMA. I was on his podcast. He's like, oh, dude, we were all in your courses. Well, they made, he made 70 million bucks last year. Net. Jake Paul too. I remember watching Jake Paul when he's first boxing. People making fun of him. I saw that video. People making fun of him. I'm like, yeah, everybody looks bad your first yeah, couple of years. Yeah. Now you see him. He's not a level. He's not yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah. But he yeah. might knock you out. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 bro, let's go back to Driven 2. Was it six years ago? Something like that? You were part of Driven 2. Yeah. In, in the Ritz Carlton. See, I supported you when you were. Not everybody did because I knew this guy. If he's big, I don't want to look yeah. like that. I don't want to be the guy that told him I won't speak. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and I remember, like, I was a huge, like, fanboy of you. Yeah. Not that I'm not anymore. I yeah. st I'm still a huge fan of you. A and it's just the the relationship has grown right. at a different level where now we're, like, buddies. Yeah. But but before, like, I was just like, wow, Ty Lopez. And and it was, like, like a dream. Yeah. And it was, like, that that moment but most people they stay in that moment that's right and they don't level up and yeah. and and then like six years later now you know it's a whole different relationship and now it's driven eight yes but back then i was so broke and i'm yeah. like man uh like I, i i can't afford to put this together like how am i gonna pay ty i remember i was talking to your cousin yeah and yes i was making some money i was making a few million but i was spending those few million yeah also but just by by consistency and execution practicing looking like a fool on stage with my accent people making fun of me people telling me that i'm not good enough yeah and just doing it anyways every single time i did it i got better and better yes. and better now we're doing a two-hour interview right here two-hour podcast and yes. it's flowing yes if i did it back then i would i would have sounded like a like a beginner but yeah. it, it's it's just what happens when you don't give up like it's crazy yes. that's what i'm saying you're level three that's now a habit for you you're not sitting here thinking how do i do a podcast you've done them so for most people man people are so risk averse they're so scared of risk yeah. that they don't realize the biggest risk of all in the modern world is never starting and watching other people all of a sudden they have your dream and then people become haters yeah your haters are going to be the people who could have started back six years ago just like you but they decided there's like a path in the road, you know, here's the path everybody goes on. That's to just what, Why do you think people watch. that, some people that start with you become haters? Man, men, men are all, almost all men are haters for the same reason, envy. 
No dude really hates on somebody who has less money than them, less beautiful women. Like All of it is somebody. That, me, I don't meet some dude making 10 grand a month and go, shit, fuck that guy. Like, I don't feel a threat. But even myself, I'm not even an envious guy. You meet a dude who's doing a billion a year and you're you're your tendencies to be like, oh, he's probably, oh, he probably cheated. Like he's probably, you know, but it's cause he's, so you gotta take it as a compliment. Yeah. Like Drake said, if you don't have haters, you ain't popping. Yeah, right. You know, when right. you were getting all that hate on YouTube, that was right. the beginning of Albert yeah, popping, yeah, yeah. bam. Yeah, so a couple of things before we wrap up, uh, Ty. Yeah. I know you you mentioned about like, you, you gave me some good uh, tips and also a lot of value for people watching this about how you gotta build more relationships and bigger relationships yeah. and, and kind of go out and maybe move in. But like, for example, like I, I have uh, three little girls. Yes. So so what uh, what advice would you give me as having the three little girls mm -hmm. with that? And and uh, I heard you have some kids. Maybe, I never say. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Could be. So you might be doing the same thing. Could be. Possible. I have six brothers, so I grew up around a lot of kids. You know, is, I think is it harder like ha like having kids or is it easier not having kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of dudes don't want to have kids because they think they should make their money first. But if you look at the evidence, every rich dude had kids. And if probably if anything, kids make you richer because it makes you work harder. Right. It makes you party less. Uh, yeah, that, that eliminated my party life. A little less cocaine, a little yeah. less Ledoux and nightclub. <laughs> three kids later, you you eliminate it completely. Yeah, right? that's why you know who gets... Oh, we're good. Yeah. Got kicked off. We got oh, okay. No, no, we're good, we're good. What I was going to say is uh, you look at the richest people as we a started. group. The richest group of people in America are Mormons. Okay? As like a, the richest religion is Mormon by like a thousand. Mormons got a lot of kids. The dudes don't have time to party. They go home. Like Russell Brunson built Click Funnels. I watched that guy build an empire starting in, I don't know, 20. He came on my podcast when he's starting out 2015, 26. I mean, he was successful before then, but Click Funnels took him to a whole new level. He's Mormon. He is. When we're out partying, drinking tequila, these guys, they don't even drink coffee. <laughs> They're just sitting there, wake up, work, 7 a.m., go. So a lot of. He has kids. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Mormons have kids. Mormons like to have kids. They got a lot. I don't know how many he has, but I, I don't know if there's any Mormons that don't have kids. They adopt them if they don't have them themselves. So the Amish are like that, man. It's like they're all successful. So I, I think there's a myth going around the internet that I think is total. It's part of why I came back to social media. There's a lot of bad ideas spreading now, man. And going viral and i'm like Psh, i gotta come back i gotta say something just to be on record for humanity and one of those things is a lot of dudes that are in their 20s are being told you know forget women until you have money this is not true man it's like at every age of your life once you're an adult at every age of 18 you should focus on all four pillars of the good life every day health wealth love happiness so you can go to you can make time to go to the gym or sport or whatever every day and get just as wealthy as if you worked 18 hours a day. You you go to the gym 45 minutes a day, you work out hard. That's that's enough. So there's a myth like, oh, if I date women, every minute I'm dating a woman is a minute I could have made money. Strategy. Strategy. Don't brute force your wealth. You have time. Yeah. And by the time, and that's a that's a dangerous slope slippery slope to be on because all of a sudden every dude i've ever seen that by the time they think it's time to kick in their health their body too many bad habits mm -hmm. habits are hard to break so to me in your 20s you should be 100 percent having fun and 100 percent working hard you know just go out on just friday night but dudes that say i never go to the club why yeah what are you gaining man I don't understand, but there's a, the reason is that's a reaction to dudes who go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's too much. Yeah, keep your keep your keep control of yourself, self control, discipline. You still go out to the club? Yeah, yeah. but but I, but I ain't gonna go out like I did at eight. Now I might go out twice a month, but I till two o'clock. 
That's it. No, nothing good happens after two. Or, t- but you said what you- time did all that cocaine and 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 stuff happen at your club? What time was that? Kicks in after midnight. Oh, really? That was only midnight. Well, so, well, uh, to keep going all night, you you got to do it all night. Yeah, but yeah, see, coke kicks. I mean, people take coke early. You tried coke before? Yeah, that stuff. I don't like that stuff, man. Yeah. My dad was a coke dealer, so yeah. maybe I uh, I didn't want to be like my dad. I guess. <laughs> on that yeah yeah so when you go out you just you kind of end early leave by midnight or one no o'clock. i live by two that by two but you know what i do here's the strategy that makes you make money and go to a club very rarely do i go to a club without three or four business dudes that i'm trying to do business with that's smart i'm, yeah, gonna, I'm like, gonna tell my wife that hell yeah man in general the bad i'll tell you this people go oh i'm gonna network with billionaires i'm gonna invite them to my office or to lunch. No billionaire dude wants to go meet up with another dude. They're already rich. Yeah. So, but I've had, I did a Halloween party at my house in Beverly Hills. I did a Halloween party early, seven o'clock to 11. Then at 11, I took four of the dudes and and a whole, whole bunch of women, friends of mine. I took like four guys to uh, Warwick. Yeah. Or Nightingale, I forget which club it was. Got a table. Those four, I counted up. That four people at that table that I brought was 12 and a half billion on the Forbes list. Two of them were on the Forbes list. One's worth 4.5 billion. He sold poker stars. Um, now he's worth more, but one was a crypto billionaire. One was part of the PayPal mafia. He was Elon Musk's old business partner at PayPal. So there was four, and there was one other guy, four of us. So to me, while I'm at the club, they wanted to do that. They weren't from LA. If I said, do you want to come do a podcast with me? They're like, ah, we're rich. They're all secretive guys. They're like, we don't want to do a podcast. Some of them would, but two of them are hyper shy. Yeah. The one thing I could get them to do was have fun. So to me, every time I have fun, I'm bringing, I'm turning it also into business. So I'm, I'm, I got my cake and I'm eating it too. I got to start doing that. Yeah. Cause that was those guys. I still taught one of them became. Donald Trump's ambassador to Sweden. Yeah. I'm out and two years later, I'm in Sweden with the US ambassador to Sweden, billionaire. I'm going, that was all from that party. Yeah. So where you go wrong is where you, a lot of men aren't disciplined. So when they do a party at their house, they end up drunk. At my own parties, I don't drink anything. Because how are you going to be a good host if you're blacked out? Right. So if you're a disciplined dude, but I still have fun. I was I had more fun at that party than ninety percent of people, and I remember it all because I'm not. I drink a little bit, but not crazy. Just like that. Yeah, just like that, like a couple of drinks. Yeah, you know. Now, now, Ty, do you still read? How many books have you read in your life, and and how many books are you <sighs> reading know. right now? I've read thousands. Um, my assistants. I just posted on my story yesterday. I try to have my assistants post put two books next to my bed every night. Yeah. So last night they put a book on a spy, Russia. A Russian spy, they they tricked an English guy into being. As so I read that book, and I they had a chemistry book. Yeah. So I try to read one book a day. Um, sometimes I read less. Sometimes when I fly, I try to read like two books. While you're flying. Yeah, because I'm on. A, I got to go to Australia on Sunday. I'm going to with uh, Richard Branson. I don't know, the the founder of Virgin Atlantic. So I f- I'm flying there. And uh, how do you read two? How do you read a book a day though? Just gotta sit in a chair. But audiobooks help me a lot. So you'll audiobook it? Heck yeah. That counts. People go, that doesn't count. I'm like, who's making up these fucking rules? I've literally had people say, well, if you do audiobook, I said, it's the fucking book. I, okay, I gotta change it. I intake a book a day. People are like, well, you're telling people you read a book. I'm like, fuck you. It's the same shit. I don't even believe. It. So in the shower, I I Set up a shower that has like away from where the water will hit. Stick your phone in the shower, put it on 2X, take a 10 minute shower. I take two showers a day basically because if you go to the gym, I do 20 minutes, let's say in the shower. I do long showers because I get good ideas in the shower. I run it at 2X. That's 40 minutes of a book. Yeah. And then I read to put myself to sleep. So you can start reading. And some books I skip a lot of books like that spy book. I read the whole book, but only half of it was interesting. 
Because they fill it up, huh? Yeah, I was like, fucking, I don't care. I wanted to say, it's like story of his grandparents. I was like, I don't care about this. And again, people go, that's cheating. You don't really read a book a day. Okay, then call it cheating. If that, The point is, I want to take in one person's ideas into my brain every day. Yeah. And, you know? and, and uh, so the books... When you when you speed listen, yeah, because the the iPhones are waterproof anyways. Yes, because I I do that too. Yes, but I don't do the two X because sometimes the two X kind of um sometimes I don't understand it because it's going too fast. Yeah, yeah. The, is is there a trick? So some that? some books that are super good or, or all the, set on or point. the narrator is like yes it has a weird voice. When the book is too good, I go point seven five speed. Oh. I slow it down. Or if there's if I'm like in a crowd and it's loud at the gym, I set it to under one X. Got it. So yeah, sometimes the the speaker's like, I went like like the point is to understand the book. I always have about 20 books on my phone that I'm halfway through. So I skip around. What I do is Monday, I do a health book, Tuesday, a wealth book, yeah. Thursday, uh, Wednesday, a love book, Friday, uh that tequila's kicking in, man. <laughs> tequila kicking in. I'm even doing the days of the week. Uh, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves. How about that? Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thir I just do health, wealth, love, happiness. And then on Friday, I go back to health. Saturday, wealth. So I alternate the subject too. Well, why is love important? Psychology. Actually, the purpose. You're of big on psychology. Huh? Yeah. See, money's not the purpose of life. Money's the fuel. So the purpose of life is actually social life. Humans are built, if you look at a good scientist, all scientists will say our brain is built for social life. So what's social life? Friends, family, romance. The purpose of life, friends, family, romance on earth. Yeah, yeah. So people sometimes forget what the purpose is. So people make so much money that they forget about social life and then they're depressed. So to me, I, I don't, I, I put health, wealth, love right up in the same importance as wealth. Yeah. You're gonna have to spend more time to create wealth, but you better be studying every week psychology because people are complicated. Yeah. Do with your health, do you stick to organic food or do you ever cheat, yeah. eat McDonald's or anything like that? Uh, once in a while. My mom used to say, what you eat 20% of the time doesn't kill you. It's what you eat 80% of the time. Yeah. So I probably have 20% of the time I eat whatever, but 80% of the time. Because so, you have a farm, so you're probably very, grow my very, very food. picky with the food, right? Yeah, I got my own meat. Uh, I got my own milk cow. Sometimes I milk a cow by hand. That's the best. Yeah. Make a protein shake from like my own cow. I know there's no hormones in there. There's no antibiotics. It's like cream in there. Shit. So that milk is really good. Yeah. I see people making protein shakes at the gym with like coconut milk. I'm like, shit. You want to be strong? All these Amish dudes are strong. They're drinking milk. Yeah, real, real milk. milk. They're not cracking a nut. Here's some almond milk. Almonds well, aren't meant to be milked, man. They don't have. They don't have. They, you can, have you ever seen all that movies? Like you can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> Fucker, <laughs> meet the fuckers. I have milk. I have. I have nipples. Fucker, can you milk me? Um, he milked the cat in that movie. So to me, there are no nipples on alm almonds. Don't be drinking almond milk. Yeah, or oat milk. Well, what about uh, like, do you ever splurge like chicken nuggets or hot dogs or things like that? Man, if you ever see what they put in, I'm gonna take you to a hot dog factory one. That'd be the last time you eat hot dogs. They take the Dodger meat, dogs taste pretty good. They put sugar in it. That's why because they take the meat they can't sell you legally because <laughs> if they put it in the steak, it would look so nasty. They're like, grind that shit up and put it in Albert's hot dogs. Then they sell them to you at the Dodger Stadium. Shit they sell at, no, Dodger Stadium. Man, I draw the line there. Some of that stuff there. Bring your own food into that place. Bring a good burger or make your own. They make good hot dogs now. Yeah. But not the Dodger Stadium. And then you said the chicken nuggets never give them to your kids? Or yourself. This stuff's radioactive, man. You might as well poison your children. Chicken McNuggets is the worst stuff. Hey, McDonald, there's a, look, Taco Bell. How much food can you get at Taco Bell for 20 bucks, even now? Yeah, but I mean, you can get, you used to be able to get 20 items of food for $20.
How much quality do you think is in 20 items of food? McDonald's, Taco Bell, these are the biggest scams in human history, man. I, I tell people the first time you create wealth, first step, chef. Yeah. Who shops for you. Yeah. Second thing, buy a little piece of land, a little farm. So if the world gets crazy, you have a place to go survive. That's the two things. Have you bought your piece of land yet? You need a little farm out here in the mountains, out by Palm Springs, man. Let's get one together. You need one. You, you and your wife, you need to have one. Set up your little compound. Yeah. You need to have a little chickens. Mexico has that good. Mexico has good food because people grow. They don't have so much factory farms there. Yeah. Every well, time I, c I come back to America, I'm like, something's wrong with America. Yeah. Americans getting so fat, they're going to have to change houses. Yeah. Doors are going to stop working. You get on airplanes. I saw this video of this influencer saying, I think I should be entitled to two seats. Yeah. Yeah, she was so big. She said, I should pay the same price. I should get two seats because I'm disabled. I don't know about that, but they're going to have to start. We're going to start getting, you know how they weigh your luggage before you and they charge you money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real fair way to do it is you go to the airplane because the more fuel, the heavier you are, they start weighing people. They're like, your tickets. 200% <laughs> increase. You get 70% off. You get all these skinny people on there. But yeah, America, something's wrong with America. And it's the food system. A lot system. of things. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the biggest No, but ones. it might all be the food system because when people don't that eat well, people? you don't think well. Yeah. You know what? Be, it, here's what happens. In America, people don't eat well at all. It, right. uh, like when you're in Europe, I looked at a Sprite in America, like those Sprite little bit bigger bottles. It has 70 grams of sugar. Yeah. In Europe, it's illegal to have more than 30 grams of sugar. So a person, you're supposed to drink no more than 25 grams of sugar. There's people that drink two of those Sprites in a day. That's 140 grams. So here's what happens. Sugar is like cocaine. It passes the blood brain barrier. So your brain has a barrier to defend against most things. Not sugar, not cocaine, not heroin. So this sugar rushes into the brain people get actual addictions it causes inflammation in your body so what do people do they go to the doctor the doctor they say i don't feel good i feel burnt out i feel so the doctor gives them pharmaceuticals pharmaceuticals are also can bypass the blood brain barrier so they bypass the blood brain barrier they change your hormones they make men have less testosterone less drive less ambition so then all of a sudden Slowly but surely, all of America gets depressed. What happens when people are depressed? Do you think they vote well? We live in a democracy. You think people who are they on- They vote for Biden. Yeah, maybe. Well, Biden's, I don't know what he's on. He, he's on a cocktail of drugs too. Really, you see that guy, you're going, this guy may not, they're talking about Biden run for the next election. I said, this guy's not going to make it. <laughs> I like if I'm yeah. a Republican, I, this guy's not going to make it. I don't I don't even think he's going to make it like too many more days. I saw him on a bike. You know, they let him on a bike. Did you see that thing? He yeah, rode he a bike. Him. He forgot to put his leg down when he stopped. The dude just went, you. And I was thinking Secret Service is rushing there. They're lifting him up. If I'm Secret Service, I'm saying my job is to protect you. I've taken your bike away from you, sir. Yeah. This man, needs, he, he needs training wheels. Yeah. I'm actually serious because yeah. then, then you won't fall over. So, yeah. but it all comes down to the food system. Because if you go over to countries where there's not so much processed food, there's 80 year olds. My grandma at 80, she's from Germany. She never ate really junk food. Hey, at 80, my grandma's twice as sharp as Biden is now. He's a, a symptom of a bigger problem. So America's biggest problem is the food system. Yeah. So th that's why I think you gotta be disciplined on food because yeah. they're gonna stuff calories into yeah. people. So so Ty, I wanna end it with this last question on the, yeah. I know you had a complete buyout of something big. So before, yeah, yeah. and it's and I don't think you've mentioned that before, but be, right before that, if you could, I know you do a trick with the hands. Oh yeah, let's see. Like, like, like well, Are you right or left-handed? Right. Okay, hold up your right hand. So yeah, you have a lot of testosterone. So this is, there's something called digit index ratio. And it's not how much testosterone you have now. It's it's in utero. When you are in your mother's womb, you, there's a release of chemicals, testosterone. So this finger is testosterone. This one's estrogen. And you can see the ratio. I have a lot of testosterone. You have a lot. 
So what that tells me, even if I never met you, if I just saw a picture of your hand, it's not 100% accurate, but I could predict you're okay taking risks. I take you're a, a risk taker. Yeah, I take a lot of them. And, and you're also not afraid of aggression. You ever punch somebody? Yeah. For sure. So learn to read people. This is the beginning. There's many. I, I built a quiz called 12 Type Stock. I feel like punching people every day. But yeah. I try to control myself. Very genetic. You need to do the gym. You should do you do jujitsu? I, I don't do that. You no. should do boxing or jujitsu, man. I've done boxing before. Yeah. But you need you need a combat sport in your life. Yeah. If you're well, thinking about I do weight training, but But that's good, but I wouldn't but you can't it's not unless you're on steroids, you don't want to lift six days a week. So you can do three when you're natural, it's hard to lift hard more than three to four times a week, really. People that say they lift more than that, I'm like, you ain't lifting heavy. Because if you bomb out your muscles, I, I work out with a guy, one Mr. Olympia, and uh, he's like, nobody can work out six days away, you know. Nobody can work out six days a week with him because in 45 minutes, he pushes you to the limit. So you're going to have your off days. You should do jujitsu. should do little Mark Zuckerberg. You never know. You might be fighting Elon Musk one of these days in the, in the ring. Yeah. I'm going I'm to be on your corner, man. We'll do that, yeah. Take a little boxing. Yeah, you know Elon can't box. Come on, man. You ever seen a dude that's never trained boxing punching? Be some wild <laughs> slap contest. Yeah, he windmills. Well, he's super out of shape. Like he's, he's but he's a, a strong guy. Yeah, he he would be. He if he trained, he would destroy Zuckerberg. But yeah. So yeah. so type uh, to to finalize this uh, bodybuilding. Uh, yes, you had a complete buyout of it. Yeah, we. But bought the thing because you just told me you just told me before we started you yeah. kind of mentioned to me i and, haven't and told anybody i don't know if yeah. i i don't know if i should be saying this on on yeah that's all right on public all right yeah so what so what how did the deal go through <sighs> oh man that's a complicated deal but we own 50 percent of it ran it and uh yeah very forbes list guy owned it so it's one of those deals where at the end of the day for you the next level for you, I'll put a challenge to you, is eventually doing M&A, buying companies, selling companies. This is the most complicated, but it's really where the most wealth is created. Mark Zuckerberg is only rich, not because he started Facebook, but because he bought Instagram and then he bought WhatsApp. Without those two, he wouldn't be half of his network. I heard Jeff Bezos got in trouble one time and, and he raised money. Yeah, he raised money. And also Jeff Bezos has bought at least 50 companies. Apple. People think Apple's just one company. If you look it up, they've bought over 60 companies. Uh, the second richest man in the world, Bernard Arnault, he, Louis Vuitton, he bought 60 companies. Elon Musk bought Tesla. You know, he bought Twitter. Mm -hmm. So buying companies is the hardest. It's easy to mess up. Um, I've done some, some, I've done some good and I've made mistakes too doing that. But the man in the arena, you ever, if you ever hear that poem, you know, people laugh at you, people make fun of you, but it's the man in the arena who's actually competing, who's got the chance to win. Yeah, yeah. So you go out there and buy, you know, bodybuilding was a big acquisition. It was a hard deal to do. It took me three years, you know, going back to what you're saying, consistency, persistence. Most people give up. And, and one thing I tell people is people may be laughing at you. But you only lose when you give up. So you build a company. It fails. Well, did it really fail? If you keep the business going. Walmart, the founder of Walmart, who became the richest man in America, his first Walmart went bankrupt. Walmart one went bankrupt. And we think of him at the wealthiest man on earth, you know, at one point or in America. That's because when he was at the bottom, everybody was laughing. Now, he just never stopped Disney. Walt Disney went bankrupt. Never stopped, never stopped. So you keep moving, it's like a shark. Shark always moving. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, uh, and raising money, is that hard or complicated or easy? I think, you know, raising money is, I consider it the highest level in business is M&A, buying companies and raising capital. So I, I think it's not something you do until you're, in the biz a long time. It's something you do after 10 years. So I've been 10 years, you could help me raise some money? If you need it. 
you could raise money. But the question is, you may not need it because right now I've bought companies for no money down. So sometimes you think you need to raise capital. Now, sometimes you have to come up with money. When I bought, you know, Pier 1 was $31 million to buy. You had to wire the money. But there's other deals I've done for smaller stuff where instead of raising capital, you do a seller's note, which means the people that buy it from you, you pay them down over time. And then you don't need any capital. So creative, but at some point for you to grow the business, it may be the next step for you to yeah. raise capital. Got it. Anything you want to tell the audience here, anything that maybe people haven't heard from uh, or people that don't people that don't know about Ty Lopez yet, something maybe that you haven't told anybody yet? I'd say the number one thing that I'd like the world to know that I have, I've talked about some over the years is the actual starting point. Step one is know your core motivations. And people say that and it sounds cheesy, but I'm saying go deeper like a scientist. There's four things that drive people and nobody's the same. So it's material things, mating, movement, and mastery. So material things, there are some people who love like watches and jewelry and it's genetic. So if that's you, be okay with it. Because sometimes people are born with a genetic interest in material things, but society makes them feel guilty. But you can't change your genes. <laughs> yeah. You know, the second thing, mating. Some people are primarily driven by love, sex, you know, family, kids. If that's you, own that part of you because you can't change it either. The third one is movement. And this is where most entrepreneurs, most ambitious people, they chase money, but what they actually want is movement and freedom. That's me. I'm actually, I have a test on 12types.com. It's a free test, 12types.com. You click at the top, it's called four motivations quiz, four M's, four motivations. It was interesting. I built the quiz with scientists and I was even surprised at what I got. Yeah. So when I say know yourself, people think, oh, I already know myself. No, I've never met a person that's perfectly calibrated about themselves. So when I took the test, I was like, wait a second, out of 100, I scored 70 on movement freedom. And I, I realized, Ty, you're not in it to have the biggest, I have a friend who owns the biggest diamond in the world. How much is that? I don't know, it's, it's, the, it's a diamond, like I forget the number, but I, when I see it, I'm never envious of that because he has a different core genetic motivation than me. And the last one is mastery. You might be that one because mastery means you always knew you were going to be famous. You always knew you were going to be respected. And I would say most entrepreneurs are driven by the last two of the motivations. They're driven by either being free, nobody tells them what to do, travel the world, work on their own hours, or they're driven by they want to be respected. They want people to know. I've had a different business partners. I've had 12 business partners. One of them, he only cared about the fourth M. And I realized, I was like, dude, you don't even care about materialistic things. This guy does, he owns one pair of pants. So I think the core thing that I, that I haven't told many people, you know, now that I'm coming back on podcasts, don't build your whole damn empire without knowing your genetically built motivations. So for me, now that I know, my prime motivation is movement and freedom. That's why I have more than three houses. I mean, more than three locations. My second biggest is mating. So I, I, I like social life, man. I like dating. So I see the advice. You're single right now. Yeah, I'm single now, but I'm just saying, I, I like, I've done it where I just try to make money and my bank account goes up, but I have no social life. Eventually I burn out. So you gotta know yourself. A lot of people are getting advice from follow, they're following this guru who says, oh, work hard, never go on, you know, don't date women, don't have a social life. But that guy's built different than you. So yeah. if you achieved his version of success, you might commit suicide. Yeah. There's people who follow someone else's formula for success and literally kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Kill themselves. Every day that's happening. So you gotta follow 
a mentor who has the same core motivations as you. Like I said, I'm in business with two guys on the Forbes list. The more I know about them, the less they motivate me. I think their life is stupid. There's one of them I know. The dude goes into an office every single day, six days a week, nine to five. He loves it. By the way, I don't think he's a loser. In his mind, it feels good. But I see he has one house, one boring fucking life. He's completely unknown. He doesn't care about public. So he doesn't care about mastery. He only cares about material things. I don't get him. So if I follow that guy, I'm telling you, I'd be the most, I would, I would, if I became that guy, I've got $10 billion in my bank account and I got to go to an office nine to five. And then somebody came to me and said, trade all your money to live a fun life in Hollywood. I'd be like, there you go. Because I value freedom more than I value material things. Yeah. So be careful of advice you're listening to because you're often listening to advice of somebody who's built genetically different. So that's why I say, take that quick. You should take it. I want to see yours. I'll, I'll 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 take it. I'll I'll take it. And and uh, we, we definitely have to have a part two because it, it feels like, it feels like forty five minutes and we we've, we've been here for quite That's a good, while. Man. If if you have if you have one advice for me, can you tell me really quick? Based on everything you know take about the me, the twelve types motivation quiz. Number one, number two, you need to put out a specific ask to the universe. You need to map it all out one voice memo. My name's Albert. It's 2023. Here's everything that's going well. Here's everything I don't like. Keep that voice memo on your phone. When you meet super sharp people, be like, can I have your WhatsApp? After a week or two of knowing them, say, you know, you're a smart person. Will you listen to this two, three minute? This is me being transparent with you. Please keep this confidential. What's your one or two sentence advice for me? I'm telling you, if you send that to 15 smart motherfuckers, I'm talking about people that are way ahead of you, you send, you will get the actual key to the next step in your evolution. I guarantee, I guarantee you. But you have to be transparent. You have to say, here's what I like about my business. Here's how much money I'm making. Here's what's going amazingly. Here's what I can't crack. I'm stuck. And it's got to be short because if you send people 45 minute things, they ain't going to listen to it. And you find 15 people and you just say, we well, do me a What's favor. What's the key per, uh, length? Two, three minutes. Okay. Like if somebody sent, I get people sending me 15 minute voice memos. I'm like, bro, no. But you send me a two minute one, I'll listen to it. And you got to be humble in it. You got to say, hey, I'm, a lot of people consider me successful, but I'm a little stuck on something. You're a smart person. Will you give me, and don't send it only to men. Man, I'm not saying this to be politically correct. Nature and God uh, makes 50, 50 male and female sex. So when you only get men, male advice, sometimes it's too aggressive, right? Men are too aggressive. Sometimes Jordan Belford, you know, Wolf of wall street. I had him on my podcast and he told me, he said, Ty, if I've been 25% less aggressive, everything was legal. He would have been making a hundred million a month instead of 200 million a month, but it would all been legal. So sometimes that was my last piece of advice. Out of those 15 people, maybe send it to 10 men, but send it to five women. Like, then again, it's not, a, I'm not a politically correct guy. I'm not saying that to sound woke. I'm saying it because men are too aggressive. And if you send it to 15 men, you're going to get 15 crazy aggressive pieces of advice. Yeah, yeah. Guys will be like, ah, don't visit your daughters for the next two years. Go move to another place and focus on business. That's bad advice. Got it. Well, Ty. It's been a yeah, pleasure. My man. Thank, Thank you. you. And where can people follow you? What's your favorite spot? Probably Instagram. At Ty Lopez is good. Or my if you go to 12types.com, I'm really focused on the psychology stuff. So if you join my email newsletter, I'm starting to put in crazy like psychology stuff that nobody in the world really knows. So. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you all.